What is up, everybody? All right, so we're actually on the new account right now. Uh, we're gonna use up our AP and do a little bit of farming, and then we'll go to the maze of it and cry. Dude, the third floor is so much worse than the other two floors. Like, it's so much longer, and each floor from that point on just gets worse and worse, so I'm not really looking forward to this. Apparently we're in the middle of a uh, caster daily, so we'll do that real quick, and then we'll move on to uh, trying to get golem cores, which went miserably yesterday. I like how we did all those stages. I think we did like 250 AP worth of farming, those golem cores, and we got zero. Great. Now I wonder whose Odysseus this is, because I, I, I know whose it is. But just chat. <laughs> it's not mine. I, it's funny, I just grab one, don't I? Yeah, it's, it's Ares, obviously. <laughs> it's like, I have like no one on this account's friends list, so. Not a lot of options. Yeah, we'll go smack that Camelot free quest like three times or something, and then we'll go to our main account and do the maze event. The only thing that like, I'm enjoying about the maze event is that every day it's like, okay, we're at least that much closer to the anniversary. That's the only thing. It's not even that good though, because it's not like when the maze event ends, the anniversary starts. There's gonna be a dead week in between. I mean, I have the grill on my main, but I don't on my ult. And I, I do want to remake the video uh, for the final boss because my video quality is a lot better now, so. I actually have no idea if he can one-shot this or not. Oh, 
Eh, 100% crits. Do we do Oosh? No, we'll give him a... We'll see if he can, if he can do it. I think he can do it. Watch as if he gain LT. Shame is we're only hitting two opponents right there, so we could actually get more back. So he's not gonna get it. He's not gonna get it. Plus, also we uh, went way around from the 100% uh, mark there. Pretty nice though. Fruit loops, yep. Blueberry loops. So I got a caster gym. I just need like a million more. I really should play the one to three star count some today. I'll try to remember to do that later tonight. Grab some assassin gems. That's, that's like the whole hold up on that account right now. Come on, ley line. No. Triple Mozart. I like how we went so long not getting Mozart. It was one of the last bronze servants we got. And now we just get triple Mozart. At least we got a five-star ember though, I'm okay with that. It's essentially getting three four-star embers, so that's that's pretty good. Like half a free daily, basically. Who needs bond? Um, most of the like staples I think I've gotten bond on already. Let's check Billy. Not sure if he's gotten it or not. Main thing is I need to get anniversary bond at ten. I really want that done. Ongra? Yeah, no, that's on the other account. This account is not gonna bother with that. I really am bothering with that though on the crap account slowly. I don't, I don't, I don't farm like at all on that account. Like my AP just whiffs every day, so. Yeah, the FP gosh is just massive. It's ridiculous. I really hope they do something to address that kind of issue. Because it's not as simple as just the FP gosh is overloaded, but there's a lot of issues when it comes to how many CEs there are and all that now, so I hope they do something on the anniversary. I mean, they honestly have to. It's like they're going to keep adding them. It's not like they're going to stop. I would not be surprised if they decide to wait to buff Proto Coup until they do some kind of prototype related story or event. However, they got above something, so it could be Proto Coup. But I, 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 they've waited so long, because Coup got buffed on the third anniversary, and it's not like they buffed Proto Coup on the fourth one, right? So that doesn't give me a lot of hope. Should I wait till the maze event? Command codes come to RP shop or JP to get some or just do the event. I mean, I'll just do the event Because one if they ever do add them to the mana prism shop or the rare prism shop You can have two copies of them, which is really good And you might as well get the grail and everything else so like the maze event might suck, but it's still worth doing Yeah, they've kind of ignored Proto Coup for a long time. Now, that doesn't mean he won't get buffed. You know, all kinds of random things get buffed on the anniversary, so it could happen. But the fact they waited this long makes me feel like they might just wait until uh, something prototype related.
Uh, I feel like it's so easy to buff his NP, right? Even if they're, you know, worried about prototype stuff, they've already established that his NP is the same as regular Kuz and stuff. So there's, there's really no, like, hold up. If you want, the one thing you could do for Proto Kuz is at least buff his NP to be like regular Kuz. If you don't want to do anything more extreme than that, that's one thing. But at least buff the freaking NP, man. Okay. Guys, remember when Billy had Excalibur and he just like fires it out of his gun? If you're not far into the story at all, I personally would not rush through the story just for A event. Those new command codes will be added later, yada yada. Like, if you can do the maze event, you should. And if you're, like, already in Lost Belt 2 or something, then yeah, I'd probably get through Lost Belt 3. But if I was, like, not even in Lost Belt yet, there's no way I'd, like, just blow through everything just to do the event. Because it's no... And, but that's me. That's because I really enjoy doing the main story and making videos and all that kind of stuff. Where if you don't really care about that stuff and you're happy to just blow through it, then you might as well. So I actually have Samsung Flow ready to go, so when we do go to switch to the main account, I can just like boot up the phone and go. So like for, the, for hopefully for like the first time ever, that'll be decently smooth. I'm sure I'll find a way to fuck it up though. Just give you know, just just give me a minute. I'll I'll find a way. I just want a Billy animation update, man. Ho hopefully in Saber Wars 3. I think he's got a decent shot at it. I think it was ridiculous he didn't get one in Saber Wars 2, but... You know, DW. Damn it. That was such horrible RNG at the start. For uh, Hercules, they attack nothing but Hercules. The crit. And those guys only get one action per turn. It's not like they were spamming actions his way. That was pretty incredible. How bad the luck was there. on quick draw, you cowards. That'd be great. It'd also put him way more in line with, like, the top tier three stars, like Robin and stuff, like his competition, and then it'd also make him a bit more in line with all the ridiculous 50% uh, battery skills out there nowadays. Before the 90% crit fails, we have triple crit buff. Dude, he says fire after the NP is completely over now. He just failed a 90% crit chance when he had triple crit buff. He had so much crit there. And he's got his fucking writing skills, so quick attacks do more damage. Oh my god, Billy, what are you doing? You're messing it up, Billy. That would have... Wait, wait, this... Get an attack buff, dude. Triple crit buff, attack buff, riding skill. It's brigands, man. Oh, 
And then the deck shuffles and Billy gets no cards, so we have to sit here for like three hours. It's great. Not that I'm in any hurry, because the sooner I'm done here, the sooner I have to do the maze event, and I'm not exactly excited for that. Wow. That is a dead George. That's why I should have cast his guts. Hey, look at Philly again. Okay, he's dead. Don't even need the crit. I swear we're gonna crit now, though. Nope, making a liar out of me. Okay, level six, getting somewhere. Not getting any drops from this stage. Dude, this stage sucks. I I, I so want to just unlock Agartha so I don't have, like, this is ridiculous. Like, the drop right here is trash. And I need eight, I need eight of them. I, am I the only one that feels like it's really backwards the way that they did this? So as time went on, the added free quests, that they're like throwing the player base a bone, right? They're like, oh hey, it's kind of hard to farm this mat, so let's add a new free quest that has a higher drop rate. But the problem with that is, that really only affects uh, accounts that have been playing for a while, generally, and they don't need the mats as much. Like, my main account has no need of, like, farming, farming golem cores, like, at all. And if I, if I ever needed to, yeah, I have access to a free quest that's got a pretty good drop rate now. But then a new account where you have to play catch-up, and you have to play extra catch up on a new account, right? Because other people like, okay, we're waiting for them to add London. Like I, I beat uh, Oceanus, so I'm just sitting here waiting around for them to add London. So you do all the events in that in the meantime, right? For a new account has to like, you know, they don't have those waiting periods between stories. So they get they get further in the story much sooner. And they're not like, you know, this account is, there's only been one event for this account that's been able to play. And so the, the new accounts need those basic maps more because they have less opportunity to get them. And then, uh, how do I, uh, uh they, they, they have to level everything ever, right? Where an older account doesn't have to level as many things. And, and so they could actually, they really need those, those free quests that have those higher drop rates and stuff, but they don't get access to them, so it's kind of lame. Alright, let's see here. Let's do this for once in case he gets just wrecked on the first turn again. I mean, ultimately, if you want to get through the early story and not level anything, you can. It's very easy to just get carried by OP supports and and, and cheese everything, use the follow system. But like, that's not a fun way. To, like, and I don't see why DW doesn't realize this. And same goes for a lot of other developers that have similar th issues where they just they decide to trivialize their early game instead of smoothing out the curve and making it like more reasonable and stuff. Because like originally the story was designed for people. You know, Oceanus was designed back in the day when there was no daily quests and Everyone was like level 30 and 40 on their units, so it scaled for that. Where, you know, now you can get way a higher level than that. But then later on, you get to the point where it's like the opposite, where stuff would scale to be a bit higher for you to have more units leveled. But you haven't done that yet, because there's, you, of course not, because uh, the content's available right away. And so instead of addressing these things and trying to add new ways for new players to kind of hit the, the kind of, not, not to over-level them, but to try to kind of hit them at the, the level curve that they want the map for the, for the content and stuff, instead of finding ways to do that, like changing dailies, changing free quests, changing guaranteed rewards from clearing a main story and things like that, instead of putting an effort like that, they just, like, they add systems to trivialize it so you can just blow through it in seconds. That's what, like, Vandictus did. They made their early games, like, so easy, and they over-geared the player so fast that it just became a joke. It's all the... So they just get to, like, sweep all the problems under the rug. It's like, oh, just, you know, get, add the follow system, and, and you know, everyone's got OP support, so they can just, they can just get through 1.0 with the OP supports, right? That's horrible for your game. For, first of all, it's boring, right? A new player's gonna be bored doing that. Uh, it, it's just not a good look, and then also it doesn't teach your player base how to play. They don't they don't learn you know how, you know how boss fights work. They don't learn how to make a proper team. They're not going to see the value of having a taunt wall like George or having a support like David. They're not going to learn any of those things. So not only does it make the game not fun, but it's actually really damaging to the player base, and it's also going to make a lot of people quit. So it's really worthwhile to try to fix these things, uh, and up to this point, DW, their answer was just the fucking follow system. It's like, oh yeah, just follow someone that has Hercules. That's, that's their answer, right? That's, that's stupid. Now, you, I will say this, 
If you try to go through the main 1.0 at the same pace that it was originally launched, you're not going to have any problem with that. Like, and quite the opposite, you'll have more than enough time if you were trying to, you know, with this account, at the age of this account, you know, they'd be up to, like, maybe Oceanus, maybe? I, I may not have been out yet. Uh, right, and obviously I'm more than prepared uh, for that, and then, you know, saying you know, by the time London would come out, I'd be prepared for that. But most people don't want to play at that rate if the story is already there, and especially if there's no events going on, right? A lot of people don't mind, oh yeah, I can do the story later, I'll just do this event in the meantime. But they've been having, you know, this last year, they've been really slow with events, and most of them are reruns, and then a good, like, 40% of them, may maybe not that much, but a good chunk of them are, you know, Lost Belt locked and whatnot. And I've always said, I have no issue with events being Lost Belt locked or, or whatever. I don't think there's much point. I say, if you think the player base isn't going to be prepared or, or they might get spoiled, like, oh no, they're going to know about VR Mash before VR Mash shows up, then just put at the start of the event, like, you know, there's spoilers, so, you know, play this at your own risk, right? If you haven't gotten past Solomon, there's going to be spoilers here, but then if you want to play it, you can, because, you know, don't... It's not up to you to tell the player if they should care about spoilers or not, right? You know, give them a warning, but if they want to do the event anyway, let them do the event anyway. And if the event's too hard for them, then that's their problem. Like, seriously, I don't see the point in locking events. I, I think it's fine to make an event where it's obviously based around the story way later in the game, and the, the, the event is also aimed at, you know, players that are more prepared and, and have a lot of units and stuff. So by all means, make hard events that are like that, but if, if newer players or, 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 you know, weaker accounts want to take a shot at it, let them, right? Because I, I think a lot of times, especially with supports and command spells and all that, they're going to be able to do it anyway. And if you don't care about the spoilers, you might as well. But again, by all means, make events that aren't aimed at new players. And if new players just can't crack an event, that's okay. But what you need to do, if you're going to have events that come out every once in a while that new players can't handle, make sure there's default systems that they can go do those things and be productive. Like right now, this account, to be productive, it needs to get golem cores, you know, maybe some gold gems, uh, stuff like a few things like that. There's really no way for me to get those things on this account in a reasonable way. I'm basically, I have to either just get carried by a support or, or use command spells or whatever or uh, you know I, I, I could probably handle Babylon with what I have now but I'd like to get better stuff but anyway uh, I have to either you know do those things or I have to just wait until they add an event because there's there's no systems in place right now where I can actually get those mats in a reasonable way there are ways to get them later but at that point it won't matter as much which it doesn't make much sense like, again, I could easily just, you know, wait at the story and, you know, focus on free quests and dailies right now. And then when an event does come around, do the event and then move on. Like, that's not a big deal. But I feel like there's not much point. Like, why not make the game a bit a bit faster, a bit more accessible and stuff, uh, where you don't have to wait as much if you want to... If you want to get through the story with your own units and not get carried, if you want to... You know, I, I think there should be more, like, better ways to prepare your account. I think it's fine. I, I legitimately think this account could get through Babylon right now. Like, I, I really... It, it, easily, and especially if I use supports. Obviously, if I use the support system, it'd, it'd be fucking easy, but... You know, because I, I like to play the game a certain way, I'd rather not get carried by supports. I, I feel like a decent amount of people are like that. I don't think... I think it, it gets pretty old pretty fast if you're just getting carried 24-7 by an OP support. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe a lot of people, they just overwhelmingly... Well, I don't know, I guess it's... People do like to take the path of least resistance, that is generally how hu humans are, so I don't know, maybe people do just do that. But they might actually be bored as a consequence. Yeah, I've always said I don't like how... It, it, it's kind of messed up, because it, go, it goes both ways. It's not as simple as the early game is way easier than Camelot. Because when, that, when, when on the Japanese server, not on the NA one, but on the Japanese server, when Oceanus came out, it really wasn't brain dead easy. Because the JP server, the Oceanus was scaled, it was created, the stats on the enemies were made for how the Japanese server was at the time. And they didn't have dailies and all that stuff, uh, and, and, and the game was just a lot harsher and much slower to level. So for them, Oceanus was actually a bit tough, not like the hardest thing ever by any means, but was, you know, like especially the, the demon god at the end. You know, they didn't have level 90s on their support that you could summon. The were, you know, roughly not nearly as level as NA was, so it was like, you know, at proper content. Uh, and, 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 but as time goes on, that it's not like that. You know, now a new player, they don't, they can just steamroll Oceanus like it's nothing, right? Just because the, the FP summon, for God's sakes, gives you more XP than you would have gotten in a week on, on the JP server originally, right? So, it, for them now, it's much easier to overlevel out Oceanus, but then they get to Camelot where they end up having the opposite problem, where on JP, by the time people got to Camelot, they had played so many events, they were decently prepared. Not not entirely though, from what I, I've seen of the Japanese server when they first hit Camelot, 
they had the time to have been prepared, but because the game had not had any bosses like Gwen and whatnot up to that point, most people didn't level things, right, really aimed at those kinds of bosses. Most people just leveled a lot of Berserkers and their favorite waifus and like AoE servants. They didn't, oh, they, people did not level things like Uriel, Robin, and those, because they weren't useful for farming generally outside of very specific stuff. Some people leveled those things for sure, but a lot of the player base really was not ready just because the game had never really asked them to you know, need units that were more aimed at th that kind of content. You know, it was a- people leveled so many Berserkers back then, and that kind of thing. Cause like, the meta back then was just, you know, see red press red, cause the enemy stat line was so much lower, that worked a lot better. But I think they need to really work on this. I think the game would be a lot better if they did. Like, I'm not saying that you can't catch up as a free-to-play and all that. You can, absolutely, no problem. It- it just- it's not as fun as it could be. I think that's the best way of putting it. It's not- it, it'd be a lot more fun. I think if they smoothed some of this stuff out. Because, again, I think a lot of players will take the path of least resistance, but at the end of the day, they won't enjoy it, and that may result in them not playing the game anymore. For example, if some, you know, Zeus, when he came out for JP and, you know, people that were, you know, ready to go, that was, you know, Lost 5 was awesome and everything, but let's say back power scaling changes or whatever, and, and now players, if they like add new systems to make the game easier and stuff, uh, when people get to Lost Call 5 and it's like trivial and they don't have any fun with it, that's not good, right? You don't want that, and then they, you don't want the opposite problem either, or when they get to Camelot or something, or Babylon or whatever, or Lost Call 3 or this or that, you know, if, if they don't have like the materials and stuff that they need, that's not good either. I'm just worried that DW doesn't really play their own game and analyze their own game very much, and so they're really out of touch with these things. That's very common, unfortunately. A lot of times, developers of long-running games that like last a long time, like MMOs and things like that, a lot of times the developers, they might vaguely play their game, but not not really. Nothing like an actual player would play the game. They're not looking at what's the new player experience versus the veteran experience like, what's it like to be a free-to-play versus a whale. Like They're not looking at those things, right? A lot of devs are like that, and they get very detached from their own game. And so they, they might focus on the high end and on what the new content is like and how the new content is being perceived, but they don't really pay any mind to like what is it, you know, what, what is our curve like when you get into this game, right? Like, um, they, and they, they have no understanding of it, and that's really bad. And that, that that's that, that's kind of what it feels like because they've been ignoring it for so long. And like, never mind like the story progression and those things. Um, just the FP summon is such an obvious problem, like how bloated it is. And a lot of people don't care about 3 star CEs, so they don't care that it's so bloated. But a new account does. A new account does want to get Leyline, right? Limit broken. Because Leyline's not very useful to you if it's not limit broken. But it is very useful to a new account if it is limit broken. And it's so random uh, if you get it or not now, and it can take ages. And half the time, by the time you get a limit broken Leyline, you're pretty likely to have gotten imaginary element or case scope by then, and then you don't need it anymore, right? And this, it's just that's not a good curve, and there's no. It means leyline has almost no purpose then if, if if you don't get it like early, early game, unless you're handicapping yourself like our piece of shit account. But you know, uh, and so like they really need to look at that. I think like a targeted summon makes a lot of sense, and you can target certain CEs or like splitting the FP gosh into two FP goshes. So you can, you know, divide things up. Things like that would really help. They need to do something. Or, I've always advocated for this. I think a new account should just start with a limit broken ley line. Because it's not OP at all. Like, it, oh no, you got a limit broken three star CE, look out, right? Like, that's nothing. And like, in those tutorial stages where they're like forcing you to click mash and like forcing you to put your tutorial summon on the team and stuff. Just have, in that part, just show people how craft essence is working. Yeah, click here, equip a craft essence and like that. The default craft essence that's just in your inventory to show off this tutorial bit is just a limit broken ley line, right? And the, the idiot AI or the idiot tutorial can have you equip it to fucking mash because, you know, that makes sense when she has no NP, but you know, you can do that. I'd make a lot of sense. I, 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 I'd actually go further than that, and I, I'd give uh, a new accounts a couple of starting CEs. Like, nothing that's going to be like game breaking or anything, but give them a limit broken ley line, give them like a, a limit broken black key of each color, uh, maybe a parted C, and then like maybe like one other thing, like him lawn or something, right? That's just a nice variety of CEs that can kind of show them different usefulness from passives and stuff. Uh, and, and just make things a bit smoother. Then they don't have to rely so much on the, the FP Gasha, which is, like I said, so bloated now.
I wouldn't I wouldn't put Leyline in the in the mana prism shop because new players do not have mana prisms to spare. They really do not. They have so much to catch up on with mana prisms that no one would do that. And also they're not gonna know to look there. You don't that's that's like buried under menus. That's a horrible thing for new players, right? That the last thing you want is for new players to just miss something important and then have someone else tell them, well you can just get from the mana prism shop, and then they have to go through like you know a bunch of menus they don't understand yet. They just started the game, right? You don't want that. It is so much better. Just like, yeah, you just start with a ley line, right? There's what's what literally there's no drawback to that. No one's gonna get confused if they just start with it. No one's gonna complain it's OP. Like, there, there's, I think it's a pretty bad idea to, to use mana prisms that way because, again, older accounts, you're swimming in mana prisms and you actually want more things to spend them on. That's not how a new account is. Like, not at all. Like, a new account uh, has so many things you need to buy mana prisms with, and they, you know, they want to just get like the summon tickets and stabilize on those things okay. and everything. Uh, and because they have, you know, no mana prisms at all, I, I wouldn't do that. Which blocked in the moat? I don't. I don't even know. Now that being said, you could do both. You could put Leyline in the Mana Prism shop, and you could have people start with one. But at that point, you're just cluttering the UI, so I don't, I don't really think that would be worth doing. It's probably because a lot of times when they block it, it's not like they're acting like it's like... It's, it's more like they're wanting to give streamers the option to not have that in their chat. That's why, like, Thought is blocked automatically, and until it's approved, right? And they do that so... All the titty streamers or whatever aren't getting offended by being called thoughts, and if it's just automatically blocked, you know, it's like an opt-in thing. So I kind of feel like that's the same thing with that mode. I guess some people think it's offensive or some stupid crap, okay. and now they want it to be opt-in, okay. basically. Harry <laughs> and uh... Okay. Okay. I was all like every time I bring this up, then after after it's been approved, then a bunch of people start saying thought, but, which it doesn't matter because once it's been approved, it's approved, and then it's not gonna block it anymore. Like it doesn't work that way. Now if I stop and restart the stream, then it gets blocked again. I like how Billy has no cards. I, I guess. Caesar crits. I don't think this is going to do that much damage though. He's level 60, not counterclassing. Not fully foed yet. This is going to be kind of underwhelming. I got a YOLO on the hurt card, I guess. You know what? Yeah, I'll oh, fuck it. Well, well, I should have given him the crit buff then. Oh yeah, Weeaboo is blocked too. Mod's having a good time right now, by the way. Like everyone's just like spamming the things they think that might be blocked now, so mods are having to deal with this constantly. And like, if a streamer, because you know, it, 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 the streamer should have, con you know, a, a good degree of control of how they want their channel to be set up, and that's fine. I can't getting nothing, man. This is crap. Anyway, uh, last one, then we're doing the maze event. Um, it, it should be opt-in, right? If someone wants to block, and I think you already can. I'm pretty sure you can already set it up where you can, you know, block emotes or block uh, uh, sayings and things if you want to. So if a streamer wants to, to block thought or whatever they can and that's fine right because if someone doesn't like that they blocked it they don't have to use that stream so you know it's like fair enough uh, but they have, making it a blanket thing is just kind of silly and it's almost insulting like oh yeah so many people can't handle the slang that we made up for you know thought like I mean come on like it's just silly okay. Yeah, I like how they, they blocked a bunch of weave terms. 
like all at once. I feel like I feel like thought honestly has gotten to the point where most people don't even know what it originally stood for. Like overwhelmingly, I think it's like that. And I always say it's like I know we had the language rant so many times, but like sometimes people do use these sayings and phrases and stuff in an insulting way, in an immature and stupid way. Absolutely. But it's not because of the words, it's because of the context, right? If someone's, you can use some pretty vanilla words and still be an ignorant jackass, right? Like, like that's very easy to do, right? You don't, you don't need access to specific words and phrases to be an annoying twat, right? You can do it with just about anything. So there's no point. Like, I find it so ridiculous in any context, Twitch, government, you know, companies, you know, uh, your local library, whatever. I think it's so stupid to try to crack down on specific language. That's it's absurd. Like, it's one thing to crack down on certain attitudes or, or behaviors. Like, yeah, don't spray paint the fucking library, right? It's not about what word you spray paint it. Just don't spray paint the fucking library, right? Like, it's so, it's so dumb to get hung up on a tool, because ultimately language is a tool, right? It's a it's a tool you use to do something. Now what you do with it matters, very much so. So you could use this tool to do something very negative and bad and harmful and and uh, annoying, or you, could, you, know, you can use it for neutral things, or you can use it for good things, right? So that's what matters. Look at how people are, you know, take, take, you gotta go, you know, individual here, not, you know, oh my god, ban the tool. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. And because it, it doesn't even work. That's the thing. There's literally no point in banning a tool because people will just make new tools. If you ban, that's why thought exists. That's literally why the saying thought exists. It's because it was a way around like calling someone like a whore or a hoe or something like that, right? So it's, just, it's pointless, right? If you, if, you, if you get rid of thought, the internet will eventually just come up with some other thing, right? To replace it. And they're always going to do that. Any, any word, like if you scrubbed fuck, from, from the English language, you like burned all copies of it in books, you somehow got rid of it on the internet, you killed everyone that remembered it, and you just got rid of it, right? So no one alive remembers the word fuck anymore. They're just gonna replace it with something else! Like, of course they are! It's not like there's something magical about the word fuck, it's just the tool to express something, right? And so they're just gonna find a different tool to express it with. Because, like, you know, thought absolutely gets used in bad ways, and, 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 and I, I, I've seen that all the time, but it gets used in neutral or, or, or in fitting ways all the time, too. So it's like, the, 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 that, the issue's not the word. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if it's, it's right to call thought a word at this point, but I, I guess it is. It kind of is, really. It's one of those things I always say. If people say it and people understand it, it's a word, right? It doesn't really matter what its origin is. Because even though people use thought in, where you, in, in sentences and stuff where you, you, you would not say that, 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 that hoe over there, right? You wouldn't say that, right? Like, it doesn't fit into the sentence structure that way. Um, but it, it's kind of transcended that, right? And that's just how language is, so... I, although, I, I still get a chuckle out of when people say, like, uh... When they use ASAP and they still say like as fast as possible with it or something like that, so they're basically saying ASAP twice. Like guys, get there ASAP fast or something. <laughs> that's, that's that's always funny to me. This crit chance is terrible, but whatever. As ASAP as possible. Yeah, that's probably the one that gets used the most. Mmm, I guess I'll just do this. Hope something crits. Double coin flips, boys. Department of Redundancy Department, hell yeah. Oh my, Billy is really having an off day here. We got 90% crit fails, double 50 fails, great. 
Uh, beastly. You see, now we have, we have less crit buffs. So even if we crit now, it won't do as much damage. I mean, we'd still kill, but it doesn't feel as good. To be fair, a big part of the problem is I have no Starjin on this team whatsoever, and then our anniversary blood isn't leveled up. So it's like it's we don't we're not actually working with very good uh, crit chances. Although Hercules makes it easier because he doesn't absorb. Okay. That's enough for this account. We still got nothing. So between all the stages we did yesterday and today, we got zero golem cores. That is incredibly shit. Like, that is so shit. And see, there's so many free quests in the game that are like this. And because they're this bad, they're ultimately pointless, aside from, like, an account that's really early in the game. And what a waste. Like, look at this. They can be Look at all these free quests they made. Look at all these. Look at all these. Right? And then this, this is just Camelot. We have all of this shit. There's just so many free quests in this game. And almost all of them are worthless. Right? They don't matter. You do them three times to get SQ and then you don't care anymore. So they put all this effort into making these. But we can't get... A story replay mode. Why? Like, why are we making these? Nobody cares. Right? Literally no one cares. So why do we make these... But we can't make shit that people actually care about. Like, it's it's just silly. 27%, by the way, it feels bad. Yeah, between today and yesterday, that's nuts that we didn't get uh, a single one. Even though that stage doesn't have an amazing drop rate, but still. Alright, let, uh, let me switch to uh, the regular phone and the regular account and all that stuff. Get that failure out of here. So what the, ultimately what I would suggest people do if they make like a new account and everything is if you're wanting to not move on with the story and you're wanting to wait a bit and level some things up and you, if you're going to do free quests because there aren't any events going on or you can't do the events or whatever then pick the free quests that do have good drop rates even if it's not the mat you need the most because in the long run you're probably going to need that mat anyway because early the game you do get you, you get access to a decent bone stage a decent hero proof stage you know stuff like that so do those right if you've done america you get a, a good void dust and hero proof stage so do those i'm just being stubborn and trying to focus on this one thing that i need like just for this one unit that i'm wanting to level where really it'd be more practical for me to use this ap like on that america free quest or, or the bone free quest even though i don't have an immediate need for those things i'm going to need those things eventually uh that's like the smarter thing to do but i'm just like i want to get a rosh max all right, I got Samsung Flow up already. Feels good. I really do need to play Ark Knights soon. That's, I, I, I feel like it's pretty likely we're going to play Ark Knights or Darkest Dungeon or something like that in the dead week. Because once the maze event is over, uh, and then even when, like, because the maze event's going to be, like, over but not finished, if that makes sense. Like, we'll have done everything, but it'll still have a few days left or whatever. So we'll have that time and then the dead week probably before the anniversary, and that seems like a good time to play Ark Knights because I haven't played it in a long time. But it's nice, you could, I can literally not log into that game for months and then just jump into it and keep playing the main story. Like, it's, it's done really well like that. So I think what they should do to deal with the mat problem is, uh, now I know I just argued about not adding things to the mana prism shop, but give me a second to expand on this. What they should do is they should add bronze mats to the, the mana prism shop, but then they also need to then add new ways to get mana prisms for new players and also make it fun it's almost like they should add like a new game mode like i want okay i've explained this before but i gotta explain this one more time I, I, the game needs this so bad so they need to add a like challenge tower that one you can replay for fun so let's say just i'm gonna make up an arbitrary number here but let's say the challenge tower is 100 floors okay that's not necessarily the amount of floors it needs to be but let's say it's 100 floors you make it so you can replay every floor just for fun once you've beaten it right oh yeah the game's loud um, but so you make it so you have these hundred floors and then you can replay these hundred floors for no AP cost uh, And the original time you do the floor it shouldn't cost AP either. It should maybe cost some other resource. Maybe you, you get five uh, You know attempts at a floor per day or maybe ten or, or whatever you can or, or you can have it where They're just a separate system that regenerate like AP, but it's a separate thing The reason for this is so this challenge tower does not take away from the, your ability to farm, your ability to play the main story, your ability to do an event. 
any of that stuff. You want the challenge starter to be a very separate system. Like maybe, maybe you do a challenge or two at the start, of the, uh, and then you, you let that start regenerating. Then you use all your AP, and while your AP is regenerating, you do a bit more of the challenge stuff. And then you use some of your AP again, right? You could do stuff like that if people, you know, cared to do that. Anyway, so you make the first chunk of floors, maybe the first 10 or 20 floors, completely aimed at new players, right? And so like, it's there to teach you very fundamental stuff. Like, you know, oh, David is good for saving your whole team from an NP. You can even have a challenge quest where they, like, force you to bring David and make the, you set up the gimmicks so, like, you basically can't beat the stage unless you block the NP with David's evasion skill. And that just teaches you something. And you're saying you could do stages for taunts and stuff. Now I'd say, well, that'd be really lame for veteran players, though. It would. But you make it, you, you make the rewards nice. So, like, when you beat that floor, although it's kind of a waste of your time as a veteran player, oh, hey, look, I get 10 hero proofs. You know, ain't nobody gonna complain about that, right? So, like, you, you do something like that. Uh, so the first few floors, you know, you can you can make, you know, some kind of fun gameplay, but it's they're very aimed at, oh, look, this is how taunts work, this is why they're useful, this is what, you know, how, like, how you survive, you know, in peace, those kinds of things. Teach people some nice basic fundamental uh, stuff, and you give people some nice loot, because veterans will be happy, oh, I'll just, I'll take 10 hero proofs, sure. And the new accounts are gonna be, it's, that's a nice leg up for them to kind of just have some extra maps early on to make up for them not having as many events that they farmed in the past, right? So you, oh, this one gives Void Dust, or this one gives Golem Course, or this one gives, you know, uh, a lore or something. I wouldn't give out too many of those, but you can work some of those in. And so after the first 10 or 20 floors, that's like your tutorial, you know, floors, and you give everyone some nice basic maps and stuff, and then you start making the floors, you know, proper challenges, right? And you, you don't make the rewards so good that people feel like they have to do them right away. So let's say you've done your first 20 floors. You can even segment it so it's obvious the first 20 floors are like their own thing and the next, you know, 80 or however many. You know, you're not, they're gonna be harder and if you can't deal with them, just come back to them later, right? So if a new account is like stuck on floor 26 and they just can't deal with it right now, that's no big. Just go do the story, go do the events, maybe go do a different game mode that we would add. <clears throat> Anyway, and then as they're prepared more, it's like, oh, hey, I've leveled this and that unit. I can probably handle floor 26 now. Let me go do that and get that reward, right? So th that's a, that'd be a fun thing anyway. And then again, you make it so the floors are replayable just for fun, right? And you can even mix into the cha into this challenge tower. Like, you can even lock parts of it. Okay, you're not allowed to go past floor 50 until you beat Camelot, right? And, and then floor 51 is like a harder version of Gwen. Right, you could do stuff like that, and then people can go back and replay the Gwen fight whenever they want, but it's a bit harder, right? So you can kind of, you can use this, like, challenge tower to, like, help out. It's, it's great, because it allows you to, to, to give new players a lot of mats and stuff, so they don't have to sit there farming shitty free quests forever. Uh, so you can give people kind of a leg up on, you know, getting the, 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 the account going. You can teach people things, and then you can transition into fun challenges that people can, can do and then replay later on in, in, in the tower. Like, this is, it's just... Why would you not do this? Like, and this is actually not, it's not, this is not like some revolutionary idea. A lot of games have systems similar to this. They normally don't quite think through it that well, but, you know, it's pretty common to have content like that. And the fact that FGO doesn't have anything even resembling it, even on a, on a, on a lesser degree, is, is just, it's sad. Like, we have no new game modes. Yeah, I know. It, it's like, it seems like too much work. And the funny thing is, it's not even that much work. A lot of it can be reused assets and just number tweaking, so it wouldn't be... It's not like they make a bunch of new art assets and stuff, but I... It, so it's not that much work, but I still think it's too much work for DW, because they've shown to be nothing but incredibly lazy, so... Alright, so I've already done, like, a chunk of this floor, but this isn't anything. This is nothing. Like, I just did this stuff earlier in the day because I didn't want my AP whiffing. Uh, we're not we're not even close to being done with uh, the third floor the third floor is huge and the fourth floor is even bigger And then the fifth floor is just why? You can follow a map and like beeline to the end and stuff But then you miss a lot of bonus stuff and you're gonna have to do it eventually anyway, so I figure it's better to just clear the damn floors and then uh, You know one at a time and not worry about like finishing it ASAP especially because they're time gated anyway. Yeah, I know, you can even mix in some just old challenge quests, I agree, Zellos, especially the challenge quests that they're not planning on ever bringing back, because they've already done their rerun or whatever, so it's like, why not? And you can do both! You can you can slap in some old challenge quests uh, from old events and stuff, you can slap in some, like, New Game Plus versions of boss fights in the main story, and then you can mix in some new stuff uh, that's original as well, and I think this would be very well received. It would be fairly easy, um... It'd be fairly easy to implement and do, but I think it'd be extremely healthy for the game on many fronts! 
It gives veterans more things to do that'd be fun and interesting. It gives replay value, doesn't affect your AP. It, lets, it gives new players, you know, ways to learn how to play the goddamn game so they don't get shit stomped by, you know, harder content when they finally do get to Lost Belt 3 or, or, or Camelot or, or Lost Belt 5 or whatever. Uh, and it gives them, you know, materials and stuff to get off the ground much smoother. And like, I, I know it's easy to shit on DW, although it may be Anaplex's fault, it's really hard to say. But it's easy to, to, to shit on them and everything, and some of it is definitely deserved. But, you know, it's not like they can't at some point get better and like put in more effort and put in a game mode and, and stuff like that. Like, it, it can happen, right? They're not... It's not like they have a policy of, let's be lazy fucks, right? I've always said, I think the thing that would really motivate them to try harder would be money, right? Like, they stop making good profit, right? And other games start doing way better and all that. And games have caught up to them. They definitely aren't, don't have as uh, big a cut of the market as they used to, but they still make so much profit without having to do much work. I know, I've said that so often. I when they added a new servant, and you farm them up and stuff, you want to go use them, you want to go play, right? I think people are overwhelmingly itching for that kind of thing. Yeah, then there's a damage CE, and then I had Waver's buff and all that. I actually could have gotten him to do way more than that. Um, first of all, like right now, my coup doesn't have the command codes I would normally give him. Normally, he's got like more damage-y stuff on his buster cards. And then I could have done the, the Mystic Code here, and the Mystic Code is like super busted, so you could, <laughs> you could do a hell of a, a lot uh, bigger crit than that here. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of good things about FGO, right? Like, like, the boss design, I think, is great. Like, seriously, I, I honestly can't compliment them enough. Like, how they've expanded upon the core combat system that's there and made it more interesting with just, like, giving the bosses, be you know, health bars and the way they they've thought up it. They have thought up a very clever gimmicks for bosses. I mean, my... Can, I mean, honestly, I cannot be the only one. How, like, how well they've been able to, to, to do boss gimmicks and like, for example, when they do Nero Fest and Guild Fest, how they try to like make boss fights that are more lore accurate. Like, look how well they've done that. Right? Look at Blood Axe and how they added these boss gimmicks and stuff that not only make the fight different and, and all that, but actually represent like how Blood Axe works lore-wise really well. Like, it's really surprising that they've done so well. They have boss fights in this game that feel so different from everything else like although i think the achilles boss fight was not tuned properly in terms of what's happening and the mechanics and stuff it's actually very accurate and interesting and and it, that's that's crazy like honestly the, 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 the whoever is in charge of their boss design just does an amazing job they do an amazing job but look at zeus there is no boss fight in this game like I, I don't think very many people are actually capable of looking at the fgo combat system and actually thinking up a boss fight like zeus even though everything in the zeus you know, boss fight was using mechanics that are already in the game, and it's like, oh, we'll just make a new Mystic Code specifically for this fight, and we'll, you know, we'll have it, you know, just do, you know, have something become untargetable and targetable based on the Mystic Code and stuff like that. Most people would never think of that, right? Most of, I think almost the entire Zeus fight, most people, if you sat them down and tried to get them to design their own challenge quest, they would never come up with something half as interesting as that, right? And, and that's just one example. There's several boss fights where I think they really went above and beyond like that. So I'm super impressed with their boss design, right? And the fact that they took this very simplistic combat system that I think, through coincidence, had a bit, a good bit of under the hood depth. I don't think they made this, you know, skill system combined with the card system. And I don't think they really thought that was gonna have as much depth as, as it did have. I think that was an accident. But the fact that they were able to capitalize on that and expand on it and they have the command codes and all these other things is really impressive. And like the, all the different things they've thought of, like look at King Potato Chips, how she plays, like on the player side of things, it's so unique and different, right? Like, it's very impressive. There's a lot of core stuff in FGO that I'm like, yeah, this is really good. And then there's some balance issues and overpowered supports that trivialize a lot of this stuff, which is unfortunate. Real lack of game modes. You can't replay things. You know, there, there's a lot of issues too, but it's like, there's so many good things that it's like, I want this game to be better. Uh, Cause there's some really silly things that hold it back that don't need to hold it back. Yeah, the core game is quite good. I think that, like, honestly, when you look at, like, that Tales of game and how much more simplistic it is, it's like you realize how much you can actually get out of... The, no the normal card system is really good in this game. It, it adds... Because you have 
at certain turns, you're more likely to want to focus on MP gain or focus on damage or Stargen or a mix of those things. All oh, the health bar's about to break, so damage is irrelevant. So you do normally very inefficient combos, but you can get like extra Stargen or MP gain. And then how you synergize that with people's own abilities, like their battery skills or their survival skills and things like that. And then you have your Mystic Code and the boss game. It's great! Like, it's really nice. Although I need to give that Tales Up game uh, more chances. I've heard they do more with their combat system later, but I haven't really looked into it. And like, when you play this game enough, the grindy element goes out the window. And that's something I like about the game. Like, for real, if you... W once you get a really an established account, you don't really need to grind much at all. Like, you just don't. But when you're early on, you do. The game can be pretty grindy in the early days. But once you kind of get stabilized and get a nice, you know, set of units, like even where my NA account is, how little I play my NA account, it's at the point where it doesn't need to grind at all. Like, I mean, it could handle Lost Belt 5 right now. Like, my NA account that I barely touch could handle Lost Belt 5 right now. It would have to, you know, use the support system wisely and, and those kinds of things. It's not going to necessarily, you know, want to three-star it or anything, but it could absolutely do it. Like my main account, I could literally never farm ever again and it would be fine. Even if I didn't I didn't get lures, I didn't get grails from events, I literally did nothing but the main story, I would be fine. Like my main account would be absolutely fine. It might have, you know, struggles here and there and it would, you know, it wouldn't be as fun because it's nice to get, uh, you know, new units and stuff. Okay, let's show off uh, some disgusting crits just because. That's another problem. The, the free quests... And, and the dailies, their AP costs are absurd. I mean, look at how look how bad the mat material dailies are. Like how bad the drop rates are. And then look at they cost forty AP. Like I mean, it's just dumb. It's like yeah, that's worth it. So there is no reason to use all these abilities right now. But uh, and I don't have my uh, I don't I don't have a, a command code that gives crit damage. That's unfortunate. I mean, it's not like, I mean, I don't know what we can say about the Sherlock thing, it's just like a theory a lot of people have, and there's some definitely some evidence for it, where he's like, borrowing the power of a uh, elder, or outer god, most likely. And it's, I, I think the evidence is pretty strong, because, you know, you've got his design, if you look at his, like, stage, the, the, the coat, it, it literally looks like the foreigner class card. Like, like, and there's just so many, like, Surter and a bunch of other bad guys have been like, something is completely wrong with this guy's spirit origin. Uh, and Moriarty has hinted greatly at that kind of thing. And the, the theory is kind of like, he's y using this, uh, you know, uh, Outer God, or the Outer God is using him either way, or, 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 or a mix of the two. And he, he thinks it's for the greater good ultimately, but something bad is probably going to happen uh, from it. But yeah, there's a lot of evidence that supports that. Because he's getting, like, knowledge he's not supposed to be getting and, and that kind of stuff, and something's wrong with his spirit origin, and there's just a lot of, like, weird design going on with him that's very, like, alien and stuff, so... But it's not like... They, they haven't explained it or anything, uh, so it's just kind of something they were kind of... I, I think it the, it would it would culminate at the end of part two. I don't think it would be something they would use in part three, especially because they don't have... They have not... They didn't have any set plans for part three. Like, they've even they've said that. You know, they had originally designed part one and part two, and it was supposed to end there. And then Natsu said is now he's making an outline for if they want part three to be connected to part two or not. And they even, I mean, I'm surprised he said this in the interview. I actually suspect Anaplex and stuff was mad and they probably don't want this interview being like seen much. Because Natsu like kind of hurt the integrity in, in a way for some people I would imagine. Because he basically said they had an ending in mind for 2.0 that was supposed to be a conclusive finished ending, right? And it was basically like, but if they want, if we want 3.0 to actually be connected to 1.0 and 2.0, which is a, isn't decided yet, we'll we'll make the ending of 2.0 more open and where it's there, it's not gonna do you know, everything's not gonna end there, and it'll be open for a continuation, right? That, that, that I'm really surprised he said a lot of this shit in that interview because like most people, I think a lot of I, I, a lot of writers for movies, or not movies, but like like TV shows and anime and other things, do those kind of techniques, right? Where they kind of decide if they're gonna leave something open-ended or not based on like what else is happening and, and they don't necessarily have a definitive beginning, middle, and end in mind. I think a lot of stuff does that and it's actually bad. Uh, but I think a lot of people would not admit to that stuff. A lot of writers would not admit 
uh, to using those kind of techniques and, and, and stuff. And so I'm surprised not to blurt a lot of. That's like letting the cat out of the bag. And most people that know the industry and stuff, they already know this stuff. They have, the, you know, and they can spot these kinds of uh, things a mile away. But most plebs, your normies, they don't know that stuff, right? And so I'm, I'm really surprised he said a lot of that stuff. But yeah, he pretty much said, you know, 2.0 was supposed to be the end, and they already had a definitive ending in mind that would not be open to like a continuation. Uh, but now he's been writing a plot outline for 3.0 that is designed to continue on from it, and then another plot outline that's designed to be a fresh new story that has nothing to do with 1.0 and 2.0. And how 2.0 will end will determine on what they decide, like how they want it to go. Uh, and I, I, I have said for like everyone, for so many reasons, I think they should go with the original ending that they already had planned, because that, you know, any foreshadowing they had done, any character buildup they had been doing, it's going to be designed for that ending, right? So they obviously should go with the ending they originally were supposed to go with. And also I think it'd be better for the game for 3.0 to be a fresh new thing that... Because if, if you were supposed to end the story at X, and instead of ending it at X, you start dragging it on to Y and Z and W, that's terrible, right? That, that, does, not, that does not result in artistic integrity, and, and you can smell that a mile away, and it really affects things. You don't, and it's boring. You don't want to do that. It's better to have a nice beginning, middle, and end, and that's that. Wrap it up, and that's that. And I think people want a fresh story. Like, I, overwhelmingly, when I ask people about this, people would much prefer 3.0 be something completely different, that's com totally detached from the, the story of 1.0 and 2.0. And you can have some minor connections, you can have cameos, like if Mash and, and, and the main character are still alive by the end of it, you know, you can have them like show up every once in a while or be a side character, that's fine. It's not like, it's not like if you make 3.0 its own thing, it doesn't mean you have to like cut all ties entirely, right? But you know, if Mash is supposed to die or the main character is supposed to die or whatever, then that, that needs to be its own thing, right? And the, like the, the basis of what's happening in 3.0 and the abilities you have, like I, I, no Chaldea, do a new system, a new thing, and like and that, that'd be much better. Because you know, Chaldea was contrived anyway, so you can contrive something else that's you know gonna have its own story and its own rules and stuff. Like, I, I, I very much want 3.0 to not... I, I, don't, I, I, I wouldn't be pissed um, if Nash and the main character are in 3.0, but they should, for 3 trillion percent, not be the main characters, right, at all. I mean, regardless of if they make 1.0 or 2.0 connected to 3.0, or 3.0 is, you know, its own thing, either way, either way, even if 3.0 is connected to 1.0 and 2.0, they need to have a different main character and all that kind of stuff because it's boring. Like even if you love Match to Death, it's boring to have the, uh, to go into a new story and, and, and all that kind of stuff and still have the same main character, especially when they've already had so much screen time and stuff. And yeah, there's still some stuff you can do with her or like Match's character development and all that, but you can wrap that up in 2.0. Like 3.0 needs to focus on new new things. Like even if Match was my favorite character ever, I'd be advocating for that. Like seriously, Match could be my favorite fake character of all time. And I'd be advocating for them not being the main character. It's not smart to have them be the main character forever. Like, it's, it's silly. Yeah, Mash is not a servant in any, any way. She was a physical uh, person. There's, you know, some other uh, things going on there, but yeah, that her servant abilities just come from basically being pseudo-possessed by Galahad, basically. And now it's like, there's like some remnant shit in there, and then like the technology stuff. Yeah, she's like a test tube baby, basically. Yeah, I know. They, they even said that like, uh, Goku was supposed to not be the main character anymore, and it was supposed to be Gohan, but then they're like, but Goku's so much more popular, and so they didn't do that. And it's so obvious too, like if you look at like, how it's built it up, it's so dumb. Uh, this floor is so long, because still we're not even remotely close to being done. A lot of characters become popular just because people have like kind of went on this long journey with them if you will and like as Rex said they're the strong so, like Superman and stuff and a lot of the old comics and stuff he didn't really have a character right but then people are way more attached to him than if they made some new character that did have a character right it's kind of the same thing with Goku it's 
more about his accomplishments and stuff along the way, uh, and the people growing up with it. I, I, dra I, I really don't like Dragon Ball all that much anymore for a lot of reasons. I think after the Cell games, it's just stupid. Like, they just dragged it out and they destroyed any artistic integrity that it had. And uh, it's just silly and there's all these, like, contrived things they make up as they go and all that kind of stuff. And then also, I, I don't like... Funimation is who does the dub. It's such a horrible company and they're just awful. And almost everything they touch now is so tainted for me. They're such a bad company. Like, they're awful. Um... And I don't even like like the Japanese version that much. Like I don't like the music and the, the voice acting as much and stuff. Uh, and to get Funimation, and so many of their voice actors are awful. Like not all, like a lot of their voice actors were just contracted and they, they're not actually part of the company and stuff. So there's plenty of voice actors that have worked with them that are fine and, and still like and everything. But there's plenty that are like uh, you know like very connected to that company that are just awful. So. And yeah, and then like, Dragon Ball itself, I think, I think just became really lame, uh, and, and I don't think it was like a, a masterpiece to begin with, so that's definitely an IP that's been murdered over time for me. Like, it's at the point now where I, like, I don't like it at all, really. It, there, there are plenty of voice actors that have worked for Funimation that are, are perfectly talented and, and are really good. That's not really the issue. Uh, the issue is like a lot of their people, and like you know, not all the voice actors are good, obviously. But you know, they, cause, they don't, they have, they don't really have any first-party voice actors. They kind of do. They have a lot of people that technically aren't part of the company, but really are. Um, the main issue I have with them is like their voice directing. I think is really bad. I, a lot of people don't realize how important voice directing is and how much of an impact it has on. Like if a performance seems good or not, and like they're they, they got really SJW right where they started like changing scripts from the original dramatically to like work in their own agenda and stuff, which is absurd. You should never do that. You know, adaptation of course needs to adaptation. You can't always directly translate things. That's a stupid idea, and you shouldn't do that. Some things you know need to be changed because of the context and because of the language differences and the history and stuff. So it's, of course there's going to be changes, but that's not what they were doing. They're, they started making major script changes and stuff to like work in their own political agenda that has nothing to do with anime and just not should be just left out of it and stuff. And that 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 that, that alone was horrible. And they started like, you know, going all these like political crusades and stuff like outside of anime and all that. And I'm just like, this is ridiculous, right? Like I just have no interest in that company and and like the way that they go about casting and stuff. It's uh, pretty scummy. Like they're uh, everything I've seen from them under the hood is extremely scummy and. Uh, uh, not a fan. Like I said, there's been several voice actors that just in the past had happened to work with them, you know, randomly. And, uh, you know, a lot of those voice actors are perfectly talented and, and whatnot, but, uh, animation itself, I think, is, uh, accessible and is terrible. I do, I, I do think some of their voice actors don't aren't even really good voice actors, and they only have jobs. It's most it's not like the people that have any contracts with them. It's like the people that they always work with that are, you know, essentially part of the company uh, that they're like really biased towards. Some of those they're not good at voice acting, and they, they just have roles because they're like in the industry. Um, But I, I, I do I do get annoyed with people that act like every English voice actor is not is not talented. That's ridiculous. There's plenty of English voice actors that are extremely talented. Uh, that doesn't always make up for a bad script or a bad voice directing and those things, of course. But there's plenty of good talent in, in the uh, the English side of things, as there is in all. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like you know like 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 you're gonna act like a whole country has no talent. Like that's ridiculous. Like you know you got. You know, like, like that, the German dub of Unlimited Blade Works is, you know, really bad, but there are German dubs that are good. And even if, like, the, a specific product is bad, that doesn't mean every individual that worked on it is bad. I mean, I've seen plenty of English, like, uh, you know, like, dubs and stuff that are really good. There are some that are extremely good, but there's also plenty that are really bad. And the same goes for, for uh, the Japanese stuff. It's not like every original anime that comes out of Japan is good. There's actually an insane amount that's awful. And it's not always just because of like, it's, it's seriously not always just because of like the premise. Sometimes it's because they have really bad voice directing or they have a really bad script. I mean, I think if anyone, if you put any amount of effort into like scanning anime, it's pretty easy 
to find, uh, you know, a, a Japanese original created anime that has an awful script. Like, I mean, an awful script. And also, I think people in the weeb community are really biased, and they kind of look to find, like, English stuff that's bad, and they sweep shitty, you know, uh, Japanese stuff under the rug. Uh, and there's the opposite too, but like a, a good example is all the horrible English, right? And I don't mean English is like supposed to be bad or it's a joke and that kind of stuff. I mean like when they have like English that's supposed to be serious and whatnot and it's just awful, right? Like and they didn't put any effort in, into it, you know, it's just like that's obviously lazy, right? And uh, th there's a lot of that in, in anime and visual novels and games and stuff from Japan that we that, that, that people are so used to that they just they, they brush under the rug and they're not like oh yeah that's actually ungodly cringy and terrible right like they're just they're overlooking it right they're, they've become like accustomed to it so it's like there's good and bad around the, the globe surprise surprise right it's like humans are humans it's not like you're gonna have a you know a, a, a first world country that just has no talent like of course that's not gonna happen and of course you're not gonna have a first world country that doesn't have Stinkers, right? And product projects that go south, you know, development in hell, you know, managers that shouldn't be in charge, you know, like why is this guy writing the script, right? These things happen in all countries, right? Like it's like wh seriously, why is this guy writing the script, right? Like and like you, when you look at like Berserk, like I see people making fun of like you know you know dubs and all this stuff, and then meanwhile you have the travesty that was the CGI version of Berserk, and it's like, well, how did that get made? And oh my God, there was an anime. I, I always, I, I, it's like, the name of it like translates to like something flowers, like sinful flowers or some crap. I'm not, it's, it's in that area. I don't remember exactly what it's called. But it's based on a manga that has perfectly good art, right? The manga has perfectly good art. You know, the art is just, you know, pretty, you know, pretty standard manga art, but it's like totally, you know, of good quality. And they made the, the most travesty, <laughs> basically what happened, what I, I think happened anyway, is the studio was basically trying to cut corners like a motherfucker and sell it and, and, and play it off as an artistic choice. So they did like this ridiculous thing where, I'll look at area right now I'm talking about. They did this like ridiculous thing where they would like have live action like people play out the scenes and they would like do this like CGI shit on top of it or some nonsense and make it kind of look like anime. And it's atrocious. Like it is, a, a, it's so, I literally could not watch the more than like two episodes of that anime and I couldn't even tell you what the anime was about because it was so distracting like how bad the animation was because it wasn't really the animation. I mean, it was awful. And like this actually got green lit. That's what's insane about this is it went through the whole development process. You know, people had the idea, it was green lit, they started working on it, people saw it like, oh yeah, this is fine, right? It, 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 it's like, how does this happen, right? It's one of the worst products I've ever seen. It is unbelievably bad. Every aspect of it is horrible, and it's like when, when you when the development side of something is that I, I can't I, I can't even imagine how the manga guy feels, right? Because he he made this manga, right? <laughs> this is what his adaptation ends up being, and it has given his 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 product this horrible reputation forever, right? They're never fixing that, right? They're never fixing that. There is no way that guy's happy about this, right? There is no way that guy's happy about this. Uh, I guess it's insanity, right? And like things like that happen from Japan all of the time, right? We, we, they just get swept under the rug and they try to like cherry pick the best stuff and then compare that to NA, you know, dubs and stuff. Like that, that's not fair, right? Like, yeah, of course there's shitty dubs that get made. And a lot of times you'll have a really good anime that gets a shitty dub and that really sucks but there's also times where you get a good anime that gets a good dub or a shitty anime that gets a good dub right like those, that absolutely happens like it's really insane to me that people try to act like all english voice acting is bad that's like saying every book is bad or every video game is bad like that's stupid like that's just dumb like you're just being closed-minded at that point Oh, the Tsukihime anime. That's a whole other kettle of fish right there. You see, G Ghost Stories is basically a anime where it was so bad, and the the high the people that made it and like we made the original story and stuff cared, but the publishers and the studio doesn't care because they know it's crap and it did terribly and they just don't care about it. So they just told the 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 dub people they could do whatever they wanted. And they basically encouraged them to make a meme out of it because they thought maybe that'll get sales. 
Uh, and so the it's a the, the dub is a giant fucking meme, um, and that that's why it, it actually has any recognition because if they didn't make it a giant meme, uh, no one would care about it, right? That because that, that, it was it was bad, right? So that 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 was actually kind of a good move because otherwise it never would have you know gone anywhere. However, that would never fly in today's industry because you know it was a lot of like you know memes and jokes that are very unpolitically correct, so you're never going to get away with that now. And then also, most, generally most studios and people that own the IP aren't willing to let someone take the piss out of their work, even if, they're pissed, even if their work is not popular. That's, that's just how it is. Most people are, are not going to allow their IP to be treated that way. Um, you know, most people aren't going to want like an official abridged version of their series and stuff like that, right? Like, they're just not going to want that. Um, so it just, it's, you, you would never really see that in today's industry, really. And, and to some degree, rightfully so, uh, but, uh, yeah, it kind of depends. Yeah, it's not even remotely PC. That's not the problem. My issue with, you know, like, why I think it's not gonna, well, I do think it being not PC would mean it would never happen again, obviously, but I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not offended by those kinds of things, it doesn't really matter, so. But yeah, the industry is so much more regulated now and all that kind of stuff. It is wild though, because anime is so much more popular than manga that and, and the the it, it really kind of sucks, I, and this must be really frustrating for a lot of creators out there. So, manga is really appealing to a lot of creators because it's something that they can create without needing a giant staff and all these things. It's very difficult, though, because drawing, although not as difficult as animating, is still extremely, extremely difficult and time-consuming and slow and, and, and all these things. Uh, so that, that's obviously a, a hurdle. But it's easier to be a creative person and make a manga than it is to be a creative person and make an anime. An anime normally doesn't want to take a risk on something until, it, until it's like proven itself in a manga or something else. Uh, that's why they you know, adapt uh, books and uh, manga so much instead of making original stuff. Although they do make original stuff. Anyway. So it must be really frustrating. You have somebody that makes a manga and really puts their heart and soul in it and all that, and you know, and a lot of times they have to go through years of not making any money and like not being successful, and then when they finally do get successful and they, they get like mainstream recognition and stuff, it's because of an anime adaptation, and then half the time that anime adaptation isn't even good, right? Like that, that, that must be infinitely frustrating. And, so, and sometimes anime adaptations are very good, of course, but like you're at the, it's, you, you, a lot of times the original creator has very little input on what happens in the adaptation. They just have to sign off the rights and then hope for the best. Right, a lot of times it's the editors and the publishers and all that kind of stuff. They have like almost no say or even knowledge of what's happening. And then so you're just crossing your fingers and hope, well, I hope this ends up being a good adaptation opposed to a bad one, right? And then if it's a bad one, it's like, well, fuck. Because if you get a bad adaptation, you're never getting another one, right? You're never, if you, if you put your, like, your, your heart and soul into making a manga or something and then it gets an adaptation and it's bad, you're never getting another one. Like it's not going to happen, right? Unless some, outside of like a few miracle cases, like I don't know, like, uh, was it, uh, uh, Full Metal Alchemist or something, right? That, that got two anime adaptations, but that, that's unbelievably rare. And it's normally only happens, that generally only happens when you have an unbelievably popular visual novel, book, uh, manga, something like that. It's unbelievably popular. It has a horrible adaptation for whatever reasons, just, you know, foolish studios, you know, budget problems, you know, whatever, whatever reason you have this horrible anime come out. And then the, that manga keeps being insanely popular, and then so they can't, you know, it, it's so obvious that even the big, the, even the biggest dum dums can see. Oh, it's, uh, even though this first one failed, it's obviously worth us doing another adaptation. Because you got to understand, a lot of studio executives don't know what they're talking about. They, they literally don't. They do not understand the industries they're a part of. They just supply the bank and they green light things, right? It's very common for a lot of like executives to not have any deep understanding of these industries, and so they just look up. Okay, we already made an adaptation for this IP, and it did horribly. Of course we're not going to make another adaptation of this. Go focus on this, this other new popular thing, right? That's how they generally are going to see it. Where, when you have IPs that get so popular, they might see, okay, this, this adaptation was shit, and it didn't do well, but man, this thing is still so popular, we gotta, we gotta you know, try it again, right? That only happens when it's so obvious that biggest dum-dum, you know, can see it, right? 
uh, and that's why it, it never really happens. Anyway, back on point, that, that must be unbelievably frustrating to be someone that puts your heart and soul into creating the story, and then it's mainstream adaptation that people see is awful, and you, like, hate it. Like, never mind if it does poorly. Imagine if you just don't like it. Like, they're just, like, portray- like, you made a character, right? You designed this character to be fundamentally about X, and, like, their story arc is about X, and then the adaptation doesn't portray X at all, right? And they make them more about Y. Like, that's got- that's really gotta be annoying, right? Like, nobody, nobody you know, is gonna be happy with that. Let's see this Buster crit here. Although, with Full Metal Alchemist, uh, specifically, the original anime was not, like, universally hated. Most people were like, yeah, this isn't as good as the manga, but at least it was alright, you know? It, and it, it's not like it did poorly. That's another reason why it was able to get uh, a second shot, if you will. However, I do suspect that even if the original anime had just been unbelievably terrible, it probably still would have gotten a second shot just because how successful the IP has become. Well, ultimately, art is just a subjective thing to begin with. That's actually something I, I never really understand about people. It's like, anything can really be art, and it's up to the eye of the beholder if you actually think it's worthy or not, right? And so you... Like, and that's, that's literally the point of art. That's, that's, the, that's the point of art. And video games, I think, have this real chip on their shoulder where they're trying to prove themselves constantly as art. When you, don't, you, have, you literally have nothing to prove. You have, you have nothing to prove. Right? Uh, and it ultimately just comes down to make something good and that you care about, and that's what makes going to make it, you know, art for a lot of people. It might not be art for everyone, but that's all, all art is. Right? That's just, that's just part of it. That's, and that's a good thing. That's the only thing that's nice about art is it's a, you know, it is a subjective thing, and so different things are going to speak to different people and, and, different, you know, and that kind of thing. So it's like, it's, they're trying to, like, get this mainstream recognition, like movies and books and stuff, and they don't, they don't even need it. They don't even need it. Right, we've, we've had video games that were very artful going back many, many years. Right? We, there are very meaningful and interesting and well thought out video games from, you know, way back in the day. And there's also, you know, countless ones that are, you know, trash or just, you know, completely gameplay focused or whatever. But I think gameplay can be art. I think a million percent gameplay can be art, right? Like the amount of thought and effort that goes into making a mechanically satisfying experience, I think, you know, is a million percent art. But that's my opinion, right? And it's just someone else who doesn't, you know, understand or care about gameplay may not see it that way and that's fine. I don't need to prove it to them, right? If I, I can play a, a game that's very mechanically driven and see the design and art of it and be and very, uh, you know, moved by it or intrigued by it or what have you and I can have that experience regardless if that guy down the street doesn't have that experience or if he doesn't value gameplay at all, right? And that's how all art is. So I don't know why video games have such a chip on their shoulder. It's really obvious that they have this chip on their shoulder though and it's been a problem for a long time and it makes them sometimes try to be overly artsy and stuff, and that can be a whole other issue. It's like someone can see a, a painting and see no, no value in it, and someone else can see that painting and think it's awesome, right? So, and, and it's, it's the same for everything. Yeah, but yeah, Full Metal... I honestly, I think the original Full Metal Alchemist anime is still fine. I think it's still an enjoyable product on its own. If you take it as like a its own closed series, it's fine. I don't I really think there's a real problem with it, especially for the era that it came out in. You look at the, the anime that came out in those years and the era and stuff, uh, like the, 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 the production value of the animation and those kinds of things, and honestly, it's, it's like, yeah, it's pretty good anime. There's nothing really wrong with it. I do think Brotherhood is better. Uh, I think there, actually, though, there are key bits here and there that I actually do think are better than the other one. Uh, but overall, I, I, I'd say Brotherhood is better. But yeah, I know people that like the original better than Brotherhood, and that's fine. I'm, I'm, it doesn't offend me. It's not an issue. And I can, it's, I'm not such a closed-minded moron that I can't see that, yeah, there are certain things that like I value and they might value differently and stuff where they might not really care so much about what the, a lot of the stuff that Brotherhood is on about. That's fine! That's not an issue, like, it's like, that's not, it's, there's no problem there, but I always see people, like, having to, like, prove things are better, than, and by all means, articulate why you, like, if you, uh, for example, let's use specifics here, let's say you like Brotherhood more than the original, uh, which I would say is a, a fairly standard, uh, viewpoint, by all means, articulate why, that's totally fine, right, if you're like, oh, you know, I don't really, you know, I don't really like that the, you know, the plot and the original flows this way, and they did this, and the character's about that, and they admitted this, you know, I don't really like that, and, you know, Brotherhood's got these things, about these themes, and I like this, and that, that's great, by all means, you know, I think it's great when people, you know, argue that stuff to the grave, that's fine. Um, but I don't like when people try to act like there's some sort of objective, like, standard for art, right? That, like, I, like the, the whole idea of art is it's subjective, so when people do that, I find that so silly, like, I, I never like that kind of thing. But by all means, arguing until you're blue in the face about why you, you know, do or don't like something, I do, I do that myself all the time, so. 
I think it's good. I think you, you need to be able to articulate why you like something, right? Because a lot of times people just kind of go with the flow and they actually, you know, are being influenced by like the social uh, environment that they're in and why, like everyone around them says it's good. So I think it's good, right? That's that's no good. You don't want to be that guy, right? It's, it's good to be able to understand why you enjoy or don't enjoy something. Yeah, people do like being superior. There's all, all video games, anime, manga, movies. There's always gatekeeping. That, that's such a thing, the whole gatekeeping thing. I, I hate that. I think it's awful. It also just forgets like where you started and how you got into things and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna be over here real quick. I need to uh, grab water. Also, the maze event is fucking boring. It's, it, it, it's really fucking boring. Hot dog bun, boys. <sighs> Died of boredom, lol. Thankfully, I'm not bored because I have chat. So here's, I think, an example. I may be preaching to the choir at this point, but here's an example because it's a uh, current. We're being topical, chat. So the maze event, I think, is crap, right? I don't like the maze event at all, and I can articulate why. I think it's very mechanically shallow. The maze doesn't actually matter. It's just fluff. You're just doing the same thing you always do. The directions you go have no impact on anything. It, do, it, it does not matter. And a lot of these points are objective. Now, they're not, if they're good or bad, it's subjective. But it's very easy to show how mechanically it's very shallow. The different directions you go have no real impact. It's objective that the maze event is, uh, uh, does not mechanically interact with the game in a very deep way. That's a, that's a very obvious thing. And that's a good or bad thing, it doesn't matter. Because, like, I could show other games that have mazes that do it better, and make it more interesting, and more involved, and more meaningful. But that someone might not like those games. They might be like, well, that's a lot of busy work, and I don't care about, you know, that's actually annoying. They might say, I prefer just, like, the fantasy of working through a maze with my favorite characters. I don't really care if there's not a big, you know, gameplay impact. That's fine. And that's fine. If that's how they feel, and they enjoy the maze event, uh, event good for them. And see, now... I actually understand their viewpoint better. That's happened many times when, like, people say they really like Nero, for example, a character I don't like at all. I like hearing why they like the character, right? And I can explain why I don't like the character, and normally those are things they just don't value or, or care about very much, right? Or they see it a different way or something like that. And that's good. I like seeing that. I like, you know, I'm not offended if someone likes Nero and I actually like understanding why they do like the character, even if it's for shallow reasons or non-shallow reasons from my point of view. It doesn't, doesn't matter. I think one of the funnest things about art is just how different people 
you know, interact with it and why, why they like what they like and what they don't like what they don't like and stuff like that. I love that stuff. And never mind any of that, how about this fucking Kirby music though? I just bit my inner lip because I'm an idiot. Thankfully I didn't bite it very hard. A uh, real big brain over here, talking about art. This is a dead end, by the way, but might as well. Wait, Kiara is permanent? Just letting everyone know, I forgot to close the app earlier today after I beat Kiara fight in CCC. Luckily, I can confirm that the memorial stage is permanent, even if you win. And by memorial stage, do you just mean the Kiara fight itself? That, that definitely contradicts what other people have said, but Mar Zella says it's permanent as well. Hmm. I don't know how that works because generally you lose access to a main interlude once you do everything in it. Could you show me a? Could someone show me a screenshot of the map? Like, could you, can you show me the stage? Like, screenshot the stage because if it's repeatable, it actually shows that it's repeatable. Not that I'm trying to be an untrusting jackass. Just I've seen a lot of conflicting reports about this, and I, basically, I want to know if I can beat that stage and then move on to unlock. I basically want to keep the wanted quests at the beginning, and I want to keep the, the like the Shiki and Emiya fight later. I want to be able to get both if I can. The main reason I'm skeptical, it's not because like, you know, like I was talking earlier a few streams ago about the scientific method. This is one of those moments, it's like, it's so easy for something to be lost in translation here, like they're thinking of a different fight or something. The main reason I'm so skeptical is just because the way they've done main interludes has been you know, once you do something, it's gone, and you can't go back to it, so... But I'm skeptical of both sides, as, as, I, as I should be. I, if it's not repeatable, I'm just as skeptical. Like, I'm, I'm completely skeptical of both sides right now. Uh, yeah, I really want to know because I'm trying to figure out where I want to keep my interlude so I, where, like, where I have the maximum amount of content available to me that I care about. The thing is, you can do Kiara over and over again and just be canceling the app. I mean, dear God, there's so many like, boss fights I fought over and over again and because I'm canceling the app, so... Now, again, that doesn't mean that maybe that you can repeat it. Maybe you can, but I'm just saying that doesn't necessarily... Uh, mean a whole lot. <laughs> also, what's important too is just because you can repeat it doesn't mean I actually want to unlock the Kiara fight because I still might have to give up the wanted quest, which I don't really want to do. Now, I know, I wish we didn't have to jump through all these hoops. I wish we got to just have repeatable content anyway and not have to worry about it because it is annoying it's worth it from my perspective to, to jump through all these hoops but it is very annoying well what i really want to know if it is permanent is like what kind of state can you have the map in that's what i really care about it's like can you Unlock it and not do all the wanted quests and then beat it and have those wanted quests stay around and then unlock the post like story wanted quests and stuff Can you like can you do that? And Rex can't you check because Rex you've done the event can you can you go in there and fight Kiara right now? Because I know you, you've beaten Kiara, right? So you, you can check Because I have a feeling what's going on is this is my theory is it might be once you do every little thing in the interlude, then it's gone and you can't replay anything. But in the meantime, you're able to fight Kiara until you like beat, you know, BB Go or whatever. That's just a guess. I could see that being a cause of some of this confusion.
If you buy the event, there's a specific menu where you get to main interludes, and it's not where it was originally. It's like below like Fuyuki or something, if I remember correctly. Okay, well see, what Beasley just posted, that is the icon for a repeatable stage. Like, it's got that infinite loop, that means you can replay it. Um, but what I want to know is then what happens if you... What happens if you beat BB Go at the end and everything else? Like, th then is, does the event close, you can't go back into it? Um, why didn't he just make everything replayable, man? Like, why not... Um, like, because why not they have the wanted quests available? Because here's the problem. Um, if I keep the wanted quests, the only versions of Kiara I can fight are like the the, the fully buffed one or the giant version. You, you don't have access to all three of them. Although I don't know if it's worth it. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to keep. But I really do want to get access to the Shiki and Emiya fight and, and Tam fight if I can. Because those are a bit harder and would give me more options. I've beaten everything, all fights. So basically, so if you clear every fucking thing, you can keep Kiara. So Kiara, that- are you in- what? That means- That means Kiara is the first legitimate, just repeatable boss in the game. Are you kidding me? Out of all the things, out of all the challenge quests, out of all the main stories, out of all the collab events, out of all the potential with different game modes, out of all these things, the first legitimate, just infinite replayable thing you don't have to jump through any hoops is fucking Kiara. I- I don't understand. like, what? Like, I'm glad we have something now, that's great, but... Jesus Christ, how is that the first legitimate repeatable boss? Out of all of this stuff, out of- like, they did the Edmund thing. They did the fucking Edmund challenge quest, and they're just like, nope, it's not repeatable. You might say, well, why not? The answer is, fuck you, right? They're, why? Like, we spent the rare prisms on that event. They had the challenge quest. Nothing unlocks after beating it anyway. It's not like you get the loot twice. You know, it's just as replayable as anything else from the, when it was, like, the event was actually available the first time. So why isn't that one repeatable? And then you got the fucking Christmas one. None of that shit's repeatable anyway, but all oh, that Kiara though. That, that Kiara though. Ugh, I, I hope, I hope this is at least indicative of like their design philosophy moving forward. But as, I think one of the, the biggest rants I had at my frustration with DW was on this topic, and I still feel this way, is every time DW has a rev of fucking lation and they start changing their design philosophy on something moving forward, they don't retroactively apply it to anything. And I don't know why, because that's like a really basic thing to do. It's like with Sanson, right? They don't do skills like his third skill anymore. They don't do that because they've learned it's stupid, right? Now, when they do anti-human, they do humanoid. And not only that, but when they give someone an anti-niche, they give that ability something else. Like Arthur's got anti-giant, but then he's got MP battery, right? Like this, they, that's how they do it now. But they don't retroactively fix Sanson because they're lazy fucks, right? And so now they're like, you know what? Why not make the challenge quest repeatable? You know, why not? You know, it's like, uh, we're not gonna, it's not like we're gonna do a re, re, rerun of CCC. It's really old content. Yeah, why not? We should make it repeatable. Yes, I agree. Good job, DW. Have a fucking cookie. Now, remember those other events that you did? How about you make those repeatable? Because what's going to happen now is if they do, like, a main interlude for, like, case files, they might make the challenge quest for that be repeatable, but they're never going to go back to the Edmund event and make that repeatable. They're, they're just not going to bother. Hi, Lost. How are you doing? Like, oh god, that's so gross. I mean, again, I'm glad they at least did it this time, but Jesus Christ. It's also kind of ridiculous that the first, out of all of FGO, it's not Gwen, it's not Lion King, it's not Zeus, it's not anything main story related. And out of all the challenge quests and collab events, you know, there's so many to pick from. Now it's Kiara. Like, of course Kiara is the first repeatable content in this fucking game. Damn it. Anyway. Like, in a way, thought loses, because we get to murder her over and over again now. What kind of sucks though, I think the meta thing for me to do would be just don't unlock the other Kiara fights, is only have 
the big version of Kiara, which is horrible repeatable content because it's really slow and boring and long and, you know, everyone stalls and who gives a shit. But then I think I could keep all the original wanted quests and then I could also unlock the Shiki one and the Emiya one and the Tam one and, and that kind of stuff and that would, that would be nice. I'm just trying to think if it's worth trading. And wait, why is King Potato Chips not replayable then? What, why, why, oh, god damn it. This is like the same logic when they add a new challenge quest to an event that already has a challenge quest. They make one of them replayable and one of them not. And I'm like, why? Dude, I, I seriously, I would spend money and I wouldn't be an ass, I, I really would want to sit down with the, de the lead developers and just be like, why? What is the explanation for when you have two challenge quests that both cost 5 AP and we both don't give you rewards after beating them and that kind of stuff? Why can you replay one of them, but you can't replay the other one? I swear to God, if their answer is it makes it special, I am going to lose my fucking mind. Because no, it doesn't. And you can still replay it through jumping through hoops. So like, like, it's stupid. I swear that's the reason. That's the only reason I can think of. Because they always try, they try, they failed with the Yang one, but they try to make those second challenge quests that aren't replayable harder than the original challenge quests. They very much do that. So I think they, they're trying to make it like a status thing or something. I, I don't even know. Can you imagine if we got a Nero Fest main interlude and all the fights were replayable forever? Do, do you, that would be amazing. Like, that would just be fucking amazing. Like, give me, give me Nero Fest 3 and just make all those fights replayable forever. And then, like, Guild Fest 2 and make all those fights. That would be so awesome. That would be, because so, then, like, I, I don't, you're not rushed. Right, if I'm like, you know what, let's, I, I never really got to give that Achilles fight a, a fair shake, right? I never really got to sit down and, 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 and do it. But let's say they add it, I'm not like, oh my god, I have to do it right now, because it's going to go away in a week. Right, I go like, you know, I'm, I'm busy right now, right? I, I'm doing this, maybe I want to play this other video game, you know, maybe I'm just, I'm not feeling it or whatever. So I, I, I just do it later, and it's still going to be there, and I can still give that, because that happens so often when there's a really annoying challenge quest. And so on the one hand, like, I want to give it a fair shake, and really see... You know, how doable is it with low stars and like what kind of setups would work? On the other hand, I'm like, I don't feel like it right now and I'm really busy. But I only have a week, right? Like I hate that. Or if you have more repeatable content, you don't have you don't you can just you know take a second and do it when you feel like it. Gramps, gramps forever, boys. Unfortunately, I feel like main interludes are overwhelmingly going to be used on events that they perceive as more story impactful. Because they even said that's why they brought Matt back the Edmund event. The whole idea of main interludes, apparently, according to D DW, it was not the idea of Anaplex, DW, any of the, the game developers. It was, the, it was just an, the idea of the writers. And they were saying, you know, we're using Edmund in like a pretty serious way in the Lost Belts, and his event is pretty instrumental in understanding his character. So we kind of need players to be able to see that event, you know, whenever they want. That was the entire reason why they came up with this system. Because obviously the Edmund event wasn't technically a main interlude, but that's obviously what inspired the idea of them moving into main interludes now. Um, so like, DW didn't even have the thought. Like, they didn't even have the thought. Like, they said it was completely just the writers that were like, yeah, this, you know, this is kind of important. Uh, so, like, what a, what a mess, dude. So, can uh, anyone confirm, like, has anyone gotten to Kiara and not done any of the wanted quests? And were you all still able to do, like, the fight? It's not like, oh, you gotta go do this thing. Because I do not want to give up the wanted quests. Those are, like, way too awesome. I just know that means you won't be able to do the like the normal Kiara, right? You have to do the fully buffed one and then the giant one. Although I guess you could do a medium uh, buffed one or something. Because oh, I've noticed overwhelmingly the KP is from the wanted quests. Like, like overwhelmingly that's where you get your KP from, so... 
Yeah, I'm sure. Honestly, I'm sure I can beat her without doing it. Like if I, I'll have to plus out the big boys, but I'm, I'm, I'm positive I can do it. Cause I mean, hell, I can beat the big version of her, so no big deal. It just means that she's not gonna be that good of a fight. Like it's not a very customizable. That's the thing. If you're wanting to like do a solo, you can do her without her buffs, or maybe maybe you pick a few buffs to make it harder. It's a really strong solo unit, right? Um, and if you're wanting to do like stall stuff or super OP stuff, you can do her with all of her buffs, or you can do the giant version. But if you're not wanting to do that, you can't use those stages are worthless and they won't be any use to you. Like I feel like I'm not gonna get a lot of mileage out of that stage, uh, even though it is replay replayable. And actually, because it, I think one of the funner ways to fight Kiara is to fight her where she's lost some of her buffs, but not all of her buffs. I think that is probably the funnest way to fight her, and you just pick, you cherry pick the ones that you think are gonna like really give you a problem. Like, I don't know, the NP drain one or something. Well, that's nice, I can at least make uh, some kind of content for this later. Actually, I need to go buy, I need to go buy the main interlude, I haven't done it yet, I should go do that right now. I'll do that after the stage. But ultimately, I'd rather have a not-so-flexible Kiara fight that's not very useful to me than, than miss out on all the wanted quests, because the wanted quests give you a lot of uh, testing ground. And, and also, like, when I, if I ever want to make like, a video, like an NP clash or whatever, having that many enemies that I can fight whenever I want is super nice. So, I did not remember that this Mystic Code eventually unlocked Evade, but it does. Like we were talking about yesterday, uh, before, it gave you no survivability, but uh, it certainly does now! Yeah. 236k. Surely Ku is getting somewhat close to... Bond 13. Okay, let me I, I, let me explain this because I think a lot of people really just do not understand that uh, understand this and they're they're seeing things as separate when they're not separate. Um, man, my phone armor's like broken and my phone keeps like going limp. It's kind of annoying, but uh, I have to buy a new one. Okay, so here's his remaining interludes. Okay, so the main interlude right here that I, we can get access to through rare prisms, and then the main interlude that was like on the main menu that was there for a limited time, they're the same thing. Right, it's just a matter of access. Whatever state you left, like the like say you didn't finish the the free version, if you didn't finish it, and you then you get the rare prisms, you're, you're just where you stopped. Any rewards you've gotten, you've already gotten. You can't get a second time. Like it, it's this, it's the same for the old one. Like this, this is the same Christmas one that they had that was free for a while. So whatever you did in that is still done, right? Whatever rewards you got, you still got. So you can't get like a, another another copy of BB that kind of thing, right? Like it's just. Uh, it's just the one. Like it's it's just a matter of getting access to it again. That's a good deal though. Five uh, five rare prisms for a fuckload of of stuff. You see. Um, this this is just where I left it, right? When I was doing it, when it was like free, I, I literally just bought it. And see, I, the stages that I already beat are still beat. The stages I didn't beat are still not beaten. I had the same amount of uh, KP points, uh, all that stuff. You know, not, nothing changed. All right, let, let's see where Ku's at. Looks like maybe 60k away. Oh, 40k. Okay, getting there. You'll probably get it from this event, I would say. And then Angra, I don't think is even in the ballpark. Yeah, not at all. But when he gets, yeah, I'll get 30 SQ, which I guess is nice. But when I get, uh, when, when I get Bond 13, I just have to start working on Bond 14, right? And that's gonna take forever. So the endless march. You know, what's funny is I actually have used a lot of rare prisms recently. I, I blew a lot. Uh, I, I bought like the rest of the Arjuna, craft essences, so I could learn break the anti-divinity one. Uh, I bought a few other things, uh, but you know I had a I just 
I've had a lot because they've been giving out rare prisms for free. Like you literally have been giving out rare. This this event gives you a rare prism if you've already done it. If you haven't already done it, then it doesn't. But that's what I was saying. Like rare, the longer you play this game, the easier rare prisms are to get because not only are you more likely to get units you already have or don't care about, but reruns start giving you rare prism instead of their original rewards. So. Only get 10% of Angra's bond, you get that in no time? Yeah, clearly. That, that's what I'm talking about. I was literally just talking about like old warfares and stuff. But it's not just old warfares, it's just old rewards that you can't get anymore because you already got them a lot of times get rare prisons. Oh yeah, that's another reason you're supposed to explore the side pass, is just because it fills up the bar and you need to get it to max. I do think it would have been cool though, if you got to the end of the event and the bar was- the less, the less full it was, the more like QP you got. Because obviously ultimately you have to fill it and then you can drain it at will, but like... That would have been kind of cool if it's like if you happen to be some nut job that wanted to, you know, just bare minimum it and not have the thing leveled up at all. You can got some keys. Like you wouldn't want the reward to be anything important because that would piss people off, obviously. But but it bar don't matter at all. It's just a linear thing you need to fill up, and then you can either keep it or get rid of it based on what which boss you want to fight. That's really, all there is to it. Okay, I do think you do need to get it maxed to unlock the final stage, if I remember correctly, but then you don't need to keep it maxed. But I, I'm not 100% sure if it's like that or not. <laughs> Ultimately, it just doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, a maze event can't do the... Uh, cra I, 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 would, I would absolutely do it if I could, because it has a lot of rewards and stuff that that account would want. But, uh, yeah, it's Lost Belt 3 locked. And I don't want to do Lost Belt 3 on the crap account right now, so... If I, if I was going to beat Lost Belt 3 right now on the crap account, I'd have to summon, like, supports that are breaking the rules of the account, right? Because it's either that, or I have to go farm a bunch, and I'm not going to go farm a bunch right now, so... Honestly, though, I could beat Lost Belt 3, uh, very easily if I wanted to. Like, if, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I literally just had no self-restraint, right, and I was just playing the game as efficiently as possible to win, I would beat Lost Belt 3 like, in an hour, or probably less, right? Because I would just start I would just start summoning overpowered as fuck supports for my friends list, or like my own units, for God's sakes. I'd use the five star Cs that I actually have available to me, and if anything went wrong, I would just use command spells. Like, I, I'd be, I'd be, I could beat it in literally no time, just gone, like, it'd be nothing. But that's a waste, why, uh, because there's no story replay. If, you know, I tell you what, if there was a story replay, I would do that, I would go murder Lost Belt 3, uh, and then I would just revisit it when we want to, you know, do it legit, right? Like, that, that's what, what I would do, but, uh, unfortunately, that's not an option. Feels good, man. Saving those apples. That's what I like to see. Sometimes, you know, some events, you know, got, some events are just, like, designed to be hard on your apples, right? But a lot of them aren't. Also, some events, there's just no way to get good bonus, unless you're, you know, getting the gosh of CEs, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, I actually love it. I love when I, you get a setup and you just get this unbelievable amount of bonus drop or a bonus point or whatever. And even though it might take more turns to clear the stage, it is, it's a good feeling. God, this fucking... It's funny, there is so much more to this floor. Like, the, the exit's like over here, I think. I think you have to like, you have to like go around this way and then come down and it's over here. But there's a bunch of bullshit in here just because... I may be remembering that backwards, but I, I think that's how it is. Yeah, Summer 3 is not great. Have fun with that one. 
I, I do think NA is going to get the rerun version of Summer 3, and that it makes it 10% easier. They made it. They made the rerun version 10% easier, and I expect that's what NA will get, because that's what they did with Go West, because they did the, the rerun version. However, 10% uh, easier for that event is still pretty slow. It is the same, though. The free quests later are more efficient than the ones early, but you also have to do some of the ones early to get the points you need to unlock some of the stuff later and that kind of thing, so it's kind of a, a shit show. But I, I would still try to go easy on the apples at the start, because it, it is just like any other event, pretty much, like that. You do get notes later that are way better. I think the note I ended up farming the most in most of my accounts, especially the accounts that I didn't want to focus on, like my old accounts where I just autopiloted a lot, it was one of like the Saber nodes, I think. I remember there was a Saber node that just had a lot of the points that I needed, and I remember doing it a lot on a lot of my side accounts. I have to do that event again. Oh god, you know, oh god. I, I, I'm so tempted to pass on that event. I pass on all kinds of events on an A, where I'm like, I'm too busy, I don't care, or I'm burnt out, or whatever. But I can't skip that one, the command codes are too good. Like, it'd be, it's two grails and really good command codes. I, I have to do that, I have to suck it up and get that done in an A. I'll, try, I'll, I'll stream some of it, I guess, just so it's easier to, to get through. Um, and I'll just, I'll just try to play it as much. I, I hope, to, uh, please, do not have stuff going on on JP. I, you know what's gonna happen? Oh my god, they're gonna do Summer 3 during the anniversary event. That, oh my god, you have to kill. That, you, that is, that's, that, you have to be kidding me. Like, that's what they're gonna do. The fucking Summer 3 event is gonna happen on the JP anniversary. Which I'm, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna wanna stream that, like, a trillion percent. But I'm gonna be like, I have to do an A. You've got to be kidding me. I'm almost positive the timing is gonna work out like that. Ugh, I hope, okay, this is what I hope happens. I hope Summer 3 starts, like, a little bit before the anniversary, so I can at least knock out a good chunk of it. And, and then, you know, do more of the, uh... The anniversary suffer the moat. Oh, that's uh, that's not great. Yeah, it's that and, like the Christmas one. I, I absolutely have to do because I've got to get the Santa altar command code. I don't think that event's too grindy though, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. The August tenth is the anniversary for JP, but the anniversary event goes on for like a week or two, so kind of a long period. Well, when I'm not streaming, I could play two accounts at one time, but my main account and my uh, NA account are on the same phone, so I couldn't do that. And I'm not going to switch phones around or bust out an emulator or something j just just for this temporary thing and then go back, right? That's And for like video creation, that'd be a, a huge problem, so I don't want to do that. Um, but like, you know, I can still, when, I, when I'm streaming, I can only really play the one. I'm not going to be like playing another account on the side while I'm streaming, like this just doesn't work, so... Dude, I feel so lazy right now. I, I there's so many videos I want to make, but I'm like, I've been putting them off and stuff, and like, and then but all this other stuff's gonna come up, so they're gonna get put off like for so long. It sucks. Cause like, there's it's gonna be really hard to be like making creative videos during summer three. Like that's just not gonna happen. Especially because I'm still gonna have to be doing the, you know, I'm still gonna be streaming. I'm still gonna be doing house stuff. I'm still gonna try to, you know, you know, have fun in my life somewhere, right? So it's gonna be really hard to, uh, to find time for those kinds of things. Oh yeah, I hate Summer 3 and I would love to skip it, but it's just, the rewards are too good, so I can't. I'll skip the rerun on NA though. Unless I'm desperate for rare prisms, because the rerun will give you a bunch of rare prisms. Also, if you're worried, because King Potato, whenever you get to King Potato Chips, if you're ever worried about that, it's really good to have Jerker. Although, she'll get re-ran and you can get her then, uh, before the King Potato Chips fight, apparently, so. The hell is this song? I don't remember what it- oh, it's some Grand Blue. Anything. You need a very strong Enkidu though, not everyone's gonna have access to one of their own or a friend that's gonna have an Enkidu strong enough to uh, solo it, but yeah, that is a way to do it. It's pretty, honestly, like that setup, I actually have a guide made and I'll, I'll post it when it's in a time. Like I literally already recorded, I literally, I, I, I did that, that Lu Boo setup that I streamed, 
uh, and I just did live commentary for it, kind of explaining the, the philosophy behind the team and the thought process per turn. And uh, beat it in one try, felt good, man. But anyway, I already, I already made that and put it on my second YouTube channel, but it's unlisted. And whenever that fight's coming back, I'll, uh, I'll post it, so. Because here's, I, I really think almost any account can beat that fight. As long as you understand the, the philosophy behind the fight and what you're supposed to do, you can beat it with such a such a joke account. You don't need anything that crazy at all. And most people are going to have options much stronger than what I used in the video that they can augment the team with and, and like give them a lot of wiggle room and stuff. So I, oh, I, like that fight's not that bad. It, what, what really intimidates people is they just don't understand the fight, I think is the main thing. Yeah, there's always command spells. That's actually, command spells actually make that fight abnormally easy because one of the hardest things is getting your DPS units their NP and having enough damage. A lot of people have a unit that can get their NP in time, but might not have enough damage. Or they have a unit that can do enough damage, but it's really hard for them to get their NP before they can be swapped to the back row, right? Where you, what you do is, if you're going to use a command spell, is you, you just give your, your DPS unit, you know, Black Grail, Heaven's Feel, uh, Limit Over Zero, whatever, the most maximum damage CE you have. Whatever that is, Art of Death, whatever, whatever gives you the most peak damage. And don't worry about starting in P at all. You have zero starting in P. And then you just, you don't do a command spell yet, but you buff them up like you're supposed to, you switch them to the back, and then when they finally come to the front, you just use a command spell to fill up their NP bar. And so you don't have to worry about it at all. And then, and then boom, you, it's much easier to kill the boss that way. So like that, that's, it's just one command spell too, it's nothing fancy. And if something goes bad in the stall part of the fight, you can fail and not have used the command spells. You don't, you don't have to commit to the command spell until you know you've gotten to the turn where you're supposed to win, right? So that, that's like a really easy way to cheese it. I think the most impactful things on the on this, the King Potato Chip solo is the command spells. I'm sorry, the command codes. Uh, having the right command codes, I think, is the main thing that makes it much easier. Uh, obviously, I think NP2 is enough, though. Actually, I don't think the NP rank actually matters. If you can get the right, the correct amount of survivability, you can always survive long enough to get the large, the, the bigger defense down, and you could, you know, one-shot her uh, with NP1 for crying out loud, so... Honestly, like, I, I think command spells can be lame depending on the context, but I think for a lot of accounts, it's a legitimate and fair thing to do. If you get to it, like, because here's the thing, you go, oh, it's lame. Meanwhile, you have like everything ever, right? Like someone's might be, you might be in Nero Fest, right? Oh, look, I beat Nero Fest Gramps and I didn't use any command spells. How lame that this guy used command spells. Meanwhile, you're sitting there with like, you've been playing for a long time. You've got all these things you know, and options and all these CEs and you maybe have been wailing. You've been spending money to get things that makes the fight a lot easier for you. Oh, this guy used a command spell, which is free to beat the fight. Meanwhile, I just spent $4,000 over time to get a bunch of rare units and CEs. Look how cool I am. Like, it's so stupid, right? So you can have an account, let's say you're doing Nero Fest, right? And you got someone who's been playing the game for like a month. Right, so obvious, and, and, and just a coincidence, maybe they, in that month, you know, they've gotten good options in X column and Y column, but they're really lacking in Z column, and this boss fight calls for Z, right? So it's not a matter of they can't figure it out or they're not putting in the work, they just don't have the thing that they need, right? So using a command spell to make up for Z, it makes a lot of sense, and I have plenty of respect for that, nothing wrong with that at all, right? You know, it's not really the same thing as somebody that's got everything ever and just can't be bothered to try, and then they use command spells, it's like, that's like, that's, it's very different. But I say that all the time. It's like, just because something can be done doesn't mean a new account or this specific account can do it. And that, that's why command spells exist, for God's sake. So if you get stuck in a situation where it's like, oh, you're really supposed to have a DPS caster. I don't have one. And a lot of the budget options that could help me here, I don't have. I have a lot of non-budget things, but they're just not applicable in this fight. It's like, well, I have Gilgamesh, but that, that really doesn't help here, does it? Right? So it's like, uh, that, that's, in my opinion, what command spells are for. So you can actually, you know... Make up for your, your shortcomings and actually get through difficult content if you need to. Which is good. I, I'm, I'm glad that's a thing. I don't actually have a problem with the command spell system. I have too much pride to use the SQ to provide. I guess it depends on the context, really. Like, I would never do that on my main. I, I don't think I, I, I really have. Uh, maybe I've done an SQ. I think I did do. Can I do an SQ? I don't know. If I ever did, it would definitely be on like the crap account or something when like we were doing a free quest for, for loot and we, we fucked it up and, and lost and I wanted the loot. That would be like a time that I, I could see me doing it.
But yeah, normally you'd use a command spell for that, like, uh, you know, that, that kind of thing, but maybe you'd already done it or something. But generally it's just not worth it, that's the main thing, you normally just, just play the stage again, right? It's like, that's not a big deal, where the SQ is gone, so... His command spells come back, you know, you can, your AP comes back, your SQ doesn't. Actually, the giant boars aren't too bad for a new account if you have a friend that has Merlin, right? You use your mash, their Merlin, and then you're actually in decent shape. It'll just take a while. Um, but if you don't use Merlin, uh, it, then it's a huge problem. Seriously, the boar fight, if you don't summon a friend's Merlin, uh, or you don't have your own Merlin, or, or something equivalently strong to that kind of setup, um, like you can do Tam on an R team, absolutely. But that, that fight becomes very unreasonable. But it, it's very trivial if you do have uh, that, uh, some of those strong supports. And you don't, like I said, you don't have to have your own, you can just summon a friend. That's why I don't like that fight. Like, it's one of my least favorite fights I've ever made. It's not super hard, it's just designed very poorly. Can I kill this? Yeah, of course I can. I have so much damage. And hell, I can NP if I wanted to. I could not tell you what the, what the enemies on this stage were and like what I've been doing the last few turns, but uh... Damage cut and damage plus are basically the same thing and they just add a set value. Like, if damage cut reduces damage by 500 and if the enemy hits you for 2000, they'll hit you for 1500 instead. Like, it's not armor, it's not a percent thing, it's just... It's just super flat. And the same for damage plus. If your unit, let, let's say your unit's cluster attack was gonna do 13k, but they've got like divinity and they got like a plus 100 damage, uh, plus damage, then, you know, it'll just do exactly 100 more damage. Like waiver's damage plus is about 500, so if you were gonna do 1000, you'd do 1500 instead. And it ignores, uh, it, it ignores, you know, like percentages and, and whatnot. Like it won't, it won't benefit from an attack up skill or something like that. And it, it won't be, it won't be reduced by a defense up either. Like it's just flat. Now hit counts don't change it, which because that would be broken. Like, that, like, like really, just ask yourself: Would this make any sense if it applied to hit count? Because then you could use damage plus on like Scath with like her six hit count Buster. Like just think of that, right? Of course. That's not a thing because and that would be so noticeable. You'd be having these like just insane damage, you know, out of nowhere, out, out of like Scath and, and Masashi and Gilgamesh and stuff. Like, so of, of course that's not a thing. Like you would notice so quickly if it was. Also, the game doesn't calculate things that way. I don't. I don't I, so I, I, I like I, I doubt they even thought about doing it one way or the other. It's just that that's the way it uh, the coding works. I'd imagine. Some are Salter, you mean like Maid Alter, uh, Sniper Rifle Water Gun or whatever. She's okay, she's not amazing. She's a DPS slash like hybrid support, but she's not super strong at either thing. She's not terrible either. And she is a 5 star, so she has good stats. Like if you like her, you can make her work. Uh, I will say if she's NP1, it's really sad. Like her NP damage and NP1 is, 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 is very... Like with all the, the work you can do to give her quick up and all this stuff, it's it's just it's not worth it. It's like yeah, you can for for someone at NP one, so you can do more damage than one might expect. But because her toolkit is so aimed at doing big NP damage, it's not enough damage to like keep up with a lot of other units uh, that can do way better. So. MHX is pretty good, especially on JP. MHX is quite good on on JP. She's not the best assassin in the game, but she's really good. Oh, MHXX. Excuse me, I thought you said MHX. Yeah, MHXX is good. It's just like uh, I think what Rex said. I see now Rex is correcting me. I already corrected myself. Anyway, uh, love streaming, by the way. <laughs> Uh, MHXX is like good, but because of her class, she's not called for very often. 
Like, it, it, she's really good, it's just she's not called for very often, if that makes any sense. She's good enough, though, that, um... How do I put this? Like, you could use her in circumstances where she's not optimal and she would still perform well. Actually, Rex, a lot of times the stream delay really is that long when I've seen Even though I have it set in short delay mode, it just doesn't work. I've tested this so many times. My stream delay is, like, not correct at all. Also, you have to remember that, that I am not... I, I gotta I gotta emphasize this. I know this might be hard to understand, but Streamer Boy does not have a neural link to chat, right? There there is a, a delay between not only the stream, but in the time that someone would actually read something. You know, it, it, I know I don't I don't what this boomer streamer didn't bother to buy a neural link to his chat. Jesus. But uh, yeah, that's a thing. Like, what a cheap ass streamer. Yeah, I've had times, like I've tested it several times. Sometimes the stream delay is really short, and then sometimes it's it's fairly long. I don't really get it. And I got that that, that setting turned on that's supposed to like prioritize the delay, but it uh, doesn't always work. Like, MHXX can still be used when you're not fighting a foreigner. Um, definitely. Like, I remember we did Dark Souls, the delay was kind of large, but I've had other times it was just a few seconds. I remember when we first turned it on, the delay was only like a second, which was really nice. I don't have timestamps turned on, Rex. And I'm not going to turn them on. Because it's annoying. I feel like this music is actually pretty fitting for like the going through a maze kind of vibe. Love all the connecting to nothing. Hey, just a chat, I, I feel like at this point, you can see why I was so frustrated with this event on the original. Because imagine every time we click one of these stupid things, it had to go into a freaking loading screen. Wait, what excuse? But your name isn't even Hanaka? Wait, what? I feel like I missed a step here. No, I love it. Thanks, DW. Yeah, it gives you all this time to like relax. It, see, guys, that was the thing. All these, all those loading screens back in the day were so you could relax. That was the point. Why do you even have four steps for a corridor? That's a, that's a great question. Avalon, that's a great question. Uh, the answer is... Okay, now now for this, uh, this unicorn. And I, I know it's at this point, I feel like it's really low-hanging fruit to say you don't like the maze event. I, I get it. But it's like they're making us do it and it's still terrible, even though this is the, the much improved version. Like, this is the dramatically improved version of the maze event. And it's still awful, and it's just, it's like, that, that's how bad the original was. Yep, the early story is really boring, man. I, I, dude, I know several people that okay, so I don't I don't want to like give away anyone's identity here, but I, I've I, I've had several people like that I know in, in real life or I've, I've known for a long time on the internet, like way before like, YouTube and all that, and they had seen my FGO videos and they'd seen the boss fights and they'd kind of come to understand some of the mechanics and stuff. Like, oh, these are really interesting and cool and stuff, and I like all these like, these different units. You, like different people can use different units and stuff. And then they try to play the game, and they're just like, this is so fucking boring. Like, I've known multiple people like that, and they're like, 
when, when do you get to the good stuff? And I'm like, in like a year. <laughs> you know, it's like, it, it's dumb, right? That's it, I, I've, I've had like some people, like my brother ended up sticking with it and, and kept playing FGO, and some that did not, right? And then there's all these people, and that's just me, that's just my personal experience, right? There's all kinds of other people. There's, there's, what I'm getting at is there's a lot of people that would probably enjoy a lot of things FGO has to offer, like the different types of teams you can play using your favorite units to overcome different kinds of obstacles and stuff, and, and the better designed boss fights that come, you know, with like the Lost Belt main story fights and the challenge quests and, and all these things. But they can't get to those things because it's so boring to get there, right? And that's why I'm, I'm so like desperate for them to make the game better, right? And I, I, here's the thing, and I know this is not everyone, right? Different people have different tastes and different people play things for different reasons. But I think one reason why you have such a sizable chunk of the player base that basically is like, yeah, it's waifu only, is because the, so much of the game isn't interesting enough, right? Like for me, I really am curious about Chad, like how you all feel about this. If I, let's say I buy a random game on Steam or something, if I boot it up and I'm, I'm it just feels same old same -o, and it's like I'm not having to stop and try to figure out how to win and it's just like it, it, it feels like if anyone could could play the game right now and they're gonna beat this level right it's like designed so I you know like the enemies are just not hard enough it's just not, it's not designed it's, it's, it's like it's so obviously designed to like almost give you the illusion of, of an obstacle but you're, of course you're gonna overcome it there's nothing's happening I, I, I'm bored and I don't want to keep playing it it doesn't matter that if later in the game it gets way better if I start playing a game and I'm immediately not like having an interesting experience, I just don't want to play it anymore. Because it's so easy now for me to go play other games that I know are going to give me an interesting and thought, like, you know, I have to use my head, right? And so that's a huge turnoff for me. Like when I played that Tales of game, that's why it was such a big turnoff. Because I, I, I've already played mobile games that are fun. You know, Ark Knights is over there, where they're like, I'm just like, I don't even, like, seriously, I don't generally even like tower defense games, but that game doesn't even really feel like a tower defense game. It's like, it's such a, it's like using the basics of tower defense, but it's, it's kind of its own thing, and like, it's, I don't like the chibi sprites and all this stuff, and there's like way too many waifus in it, but I still enjoy that game, and I'm sitting here like, wow, these guys' level design is excellent. Now, I will say, like, literally the first, like, world and a half of Ark Knights is too easy. I think anyone that watched my streams back in the day... I was like, yeah, this is a bit too easy, and I wasn't really enjoying Ark Knights at the beginning. I'm like, this is pretty boring. I'm like, these stages are so easy, they're not teaching me anything. Because I could literally place my units randomly around this stage, and I would still win, right? And th I stand by that that criticism that is bad of Ark Knights. But Ark Knights steps it up pretty quick. Pretty pretty quickly in, in Ark Knights, they start making, uh, you know, stages that are like, oh, you need to start kind of actually thinking about what you're doing. And you'll, you'll clearly see mistakes you make if you get punished for it. And then these, not only that, but they start making these just really innovative and well-designed stages. Like, I'm really impressed with the Ark Knight stage design. They're able to keep things varied, but then sometimes bring back, like, it's not like every stage is totally a unique butterfly. They find the perfect balance of introducing new mechanics, new enemies, new map gimmicks, new, you know, setups, but then also sometimes, bring, okay, remember that one stage? This is kind of similar to that, but it's even harder. Or, or it's like, there's spiders now, right? Like, it's shit like that. And so they find the perfect balance of like, you know, giving you similar stuff and also introducing new things. and. Like I said, there's so many things about Ark Knights where it's not my style of game, but I still end up enjoying the hell out of that game because it is designed so well. And because the game, the thought about the gameplay, right? They actually care. And they thought, okay, how can we make a gameplay experience for this game good? Like, I think a lot of people have an easy time with Ark Knights because they over-prepare and they farm too much and they get a million six stars and they leap to everything and then they just shit on the story. But that's not how most people, that's not how the game is designed to be played. It clearly isn't. That's not what a lot of people are going to do. If you just sit down and boot up Ark Knights and kind of just farm when you need to and kind of just go through the story, that game does such an excellent job of giving you a good gameplay experience all the way through. Uh, you know, the, the tutorial is too easy, but, you know, after, like, World like world 2 and on, I would say it does a very good experience. Because, like, World 2 compared to, like, World 6, World 2 is really easy. But when you're in World 2, you have fuck all units that don't have good options, so it actually is hard, right? So it's like... That's good design, and you know, FGO is not really doing a good job at that kind of thing. And so back to like people were saying, you know, the early stories of FGO are boring. It is so worth it for FGO to put in time, money, and effort to make their early game significantly better. They should do it. It's not just something to be nice. That is, from a business standpoint, 
worth doing. Because I, I, I wish you could, there's no way to see the statistics on this, and I doubt anyone's been collecting statistics like this even at DW, but it'd be fascinating to see how many people, like, quit before Camelot. Like, how many people try the game and quit before Camelot? And then, obviously, they might quit for a variety of reasons. They might find another game they like. They don't like the characters. They don't, you know, it could be all kinds of things. But I think a lot of people that would quit before Camelot, it's because they're just bored. Like, this is, like, this is just a stupid phone game where you grind a lot for titties, right? Like, and they're, not, they're never going to see any of the better stuff. They're never going to, you know, they're not going to even see the intricacies with, like, the taunt walls and what you can do with, you know, your, the deck and the different team set. They're never going to see any of that. They're never going to see any of that. I'm sure loads of people quit the game before seeing any of that. And that is such a reason to, like, introduce people into, hey, look, this game actually has some real meat on its bones for gameplay, right? Like, it, it does. And so if, if that's what you're here for, it, it's it, it, we got it, right? And, and some people don't want, you know, they don't care about that. Some people are going to enjoy Efco with or without any meat on the gameplay bones, sure. But wh why not make sure people are aware that it's there, that it's, so if they want it, they can have it, right? That's actually pretty important. That's like the thing with that Tales of game. I'm not even motivated to see the later boss fights because there's nothing indicating to me that it has better boss fights later. If I knew the, the Tales of game was going to have like more interesting mechanics as the game went on and had better boss fights and stuff, I'd be more willing to go play it more, right? But because I have no indication that there's really anything there that I give a flying fuck about, I'm like, why even bother? Like right now, I am collecting my daily logins in that game. Because in case, you know, it does have good stuff and they have like Kratos or something, I, uh, you know, I want to make sure I can get them, but, uh... I really am worried about that game because even if they put more effort and make the enemies like you know tougher and they make the enemies smarter and they give them gimmicks and stuff, the player is working with such a limited toolkit. Like it's the amount of options the player has in that in the Tales of game compared to FGO is is sad. Each unit has three skills and that's it. And because of the way the cooldowns on those skills work, you, it's really straightforward which skills you use. Most of the turns you're not even deciding between those three skills because of the way the cooldowns are done. It's like really obvious which one you're supposed to use first, and then the other two you just use while you're waiting for that one to come back, right? There's almost no decision making there, right? Where F go, F, not only do you have the three skills per unit, but there's a lot of times you should and should not use those skills, and then it's those aren't your only actions. It's not like Ku only has these three actions and he has no other actions. You know, every turn we're interacting with his deck, and there's a lot of different synergies with that, and then your NP comes up and is like a guaranteed action when you have it, right? And then you have the Mystic Code. And the, just the combination of the three skills in the Mystic Code alone add a lot of decision making, right? And then you combine that with this, the card system. The amount of decisions available to you per turn and FGO are actually decently large. It's not the largest set of any game by any means, but you have a large amount of actions available to you every single turn in FGO. Where in that Tales of game, you absolutely do not. Now, there's still planning and skill involved. Like, if you have a hard boss, you're still going to need to think ahead. You need to bring, like, units that makes sense for the fight, but that's true for FGO as well, and you have a lot more decision making. So, so far what I see of that, that Tales of game, it, it there's very little decision making to be made outside of the initial, there's decision making to be made with the initial units that you bring. But then playing the team is like, laughably easy. Yeah, I really dislike how only five stars have no uh, NPs, you know, Mystic Arts right now. I'm hoping that changes. I, I really dislike that. that. That was such a bad decision on their part, too. Like, that was a bad decision on their part. Because one of the most famous things of Tales of games is the Mystic Arts. People love the Mystic Arts from Tales of games. And, like, the whole one reason they like them is not just that they're fancy, but it's, like, it's been, like, a thing where, like, uh, it depends on which developer does it, but in a lot of the Tales of games, the Mystic Arts are basically, like, an extension of the character. They're basically personifying the character in a super attack. And obviously people find that cool. Like, obviously, right? And, it's, and that's always been a thing, right? Like, that that's kind of been the shtick for a long time. And then so you make a, a, a game that's all about collecting all the different characters from the different games and everything, and then you're not going to give them their most thematic attack that's, like, their thing. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, why would... That's such a fucking stupid move. That was, like, that was one of the biggest... The second I figured out that four stars did not have their Mystic Arts, I was just like... That, that murdered my motivation to want to play. Like that that was that was ridiculous. Like that is and that's lazy. That is lazy. And what I, I hate games that are like trying to make all the money. That game is obviously aimed at oh man, the Gosha market's really popular. We gotta capitalize on this. And they and they do all the they put all this money into the bells and whistles of like the UI, like the interface and stuff. But you can't even be bothered you're expecting people to spend money on this game. And you can't even be bothered to give each unit their fucking mystic art. Like that's nuts, right? I mean, that's that's nuts. Yeah, I think they should rework Fuyuki to London. I think I, I would still rework America a little bit. Like, I'd tweak the stats and stuff. 
Don't, here's the problem if you don't twink America. Imagine, like seriously, think about this. This is a real problem. Imagine you rework the Yuki to London, and you maybe you incorporate uh, some light break bar gimmicks, something too crazy. But you know, you make it a little bit harder. You you kind of you kind of show people like you know where where you know David would be good, and you kind you know you you make the rewards better. Where like you know when you beat the Yuki, you get more loot, so it helps you kind of level units up and be more prepared as things get harder, right? Uh, and so let's say you're, you're throwing out some gimmicks in there, like maybe when you fight Cast Cocoon for Yuki, you know, something happens, you, he has two health bars, you break the first health bar, maybe he gets a tick of NP or something when you break the health bar, or he gains evade, you know, it's just very simple g gimmicks, but things to make, you know, kind of make people, you know, pay attention and, and realize, oh, this is how you counterplay these things, that kind of stuff. And then you get to America, and then it's just right back to, you know, America, right? Like, it would be really weird. Like, America right now stands out as being a little, a little bit better than the stuff before it. You know, it's not as good as Camelot by any means. It's noticeably worse than Camelot gameplay-wise. But it's like it's. It, but if you updated everything else, that would make America stand out so much as being fucking lame. So I would say at that point, uh, honestly, I would just update all of 1.0. I, I would even do Camelot. I, I, Camelot would need a lot less work than the rest of the stuff. But I would just, I would, I would do a, a, a you know, pretty major revamp for the early stuff. But I would, I would revamp all of 1.0. Um, I, like I said, though, Camelot would need very little work. Like it would need very little work. Uh, and then you make the story harder and more engaging, more interesting. But then you also you make sure you're teaching people things better, right? Like like because Saint George is in Saint George is in Orleans. So and some of, for the stages where Saint George is a story support, you should like make players bring Saint George. Although I, maybe you could always give people the option to opt out. But like if you pick to bring Saint George, if you have like a tutorial, you don't want to build these stupid tutorials though that like holds your hand and you don't do anything. It's basically just, it gives you, like, yeah, it's, like, briefly kind of, you know, explains what Taunt is for and stuff. Like, hey, you could wait to use Taunt so the Taunt will encompass the enemy's Noble Phantasm, and now you know where the Noble Phantasm is headed, right? And you have the stage kind of set up where the enemy's going to get their Noble Phantasm, and you're not going to kill them in time to stop them, and that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, and so you kind of teach people the value of, of a Taunt Wall and stuff like that. And like I said, you can do that with David, like, in that Challenge Tower or whatever. So, yeah, you do a better job of explaining things to the player in a more hands-on way. You don't want to, you know, like, that's, you know, good. And you make it harder. And then you kind of, that, that will smooth people into, you know, when you do something they get to Gwen, it's not like, lol, all of a sudden the game, you know, your team comp matters. That's the thing. Up till Gwen, your team comp doesn't really matter. You can just bring your highest level servants, bring your berserkers, whatever. You're not actually planning for anything. Um, and then when you get to Camelot, you know, if you try to fight Gwen that way... Oh, Gwen seriously is not that hard. He isn't, right? Like, he's not like the hardest boss by any means. But he's the first boss that you have to account for what he is. Like, he's an X boss. I need to bring units that are good in X, right? And if you don't do that, even if you summon, like, an OP support, if you summon an OP support that doesn't make a lot of sense for the fight, you're still going to get smacked. Like, Gilgamesh. You could summon a friend's Gilgamesh, but you don't bring David, you don't bring George or anything, and then Gil just dies to the first Gwen NP. You're fucked! Right? It doesn't matter that Gil's really strong, it's not going to actually help you that much in that fight, right? Uh, which is a good thing, you should, it's, it's, it's good that, you, you know, you have to think a little bit, but, uh... I know a lot of people that they got to Gwen and basically had not been needing to understand team comp building up to that point, they thought he was unfair. Like, they thought he was unfair, they're like, oh, this is just a big stat line that you can't deal with, and it's like, yeah, you actually, you, you really can, um... But yeah, that, that's, that's the game's fault, that's when you, when you condition your players that way, you know, they're not ready for the, the gameplay to start, you know, picking up. Yeah, I know a lot of people when they fought, first fought Gwen thought it was BS, but then they've gone back and fought him again in a memorial stage or in a second account or whatever, and they're like, oh yeah, this was, I was just such a fucking idiot. But you're an idiot because the game, you know, conditions you to be one. <laughs> I think there's a huge difference between a four story support and like a tutorial stage. It's not really the same thing, right? Like, you don't make it like, oh, it's a really hard boss that you're gonna have to really think about and, and you know, like, it's not support. You, you just make it, you make the stage, this is a tutorial stage, right? It's, it's a nothing stage, right? It's not, and it, it kind of plays out to, to show these, you know, gimmicks and stuff. Like, that, 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 no one's gonna complain about that. And actually, I don't mind four story supports when they make sense and when they're not holding you back a lot. Like, Karna and the God Juna fight works. There's a reason no one complains about that. No one complains about the four story support Karna fight because the fight is built around the idea, right? That's like the, that's like the whole thing. Like, no one complains about that. People complain about, I have to bring Masashi to an archer fight and Masashi doesn't have her third skill. 
right? That and that because that's dumb. And those fights aren't tutorial fights; they're like full-on boss fights. Giant snake, by the way. I like to point out how boring this event is. Like literally none of these stages. They're not they're not even interesting enough to like do a solo of. I mean 161,000 health on a fucking snake. Like that's that's so nothing. Like yeah, snakes can be really annoying, but that's so little health that it's never gonna matter. And you have this mystico that's so strong. The later story fights are good, though. This, this event does end with some really nice fights, but I, again, I don't want to... Kind of same principle. I don't want to grind and be bored forever and then have five seconds of, oh, this is awesome. Like, just pacing, people. Pacing. Yeah, if, uh, if Masashi just had taunt, that would be nice, because she could just get rid of her. That's one of the biggest issues, is the fact that... You can, you can, it's so random, like, maybe she's gonna live long enough to get her NP, and I, I don't mean in the Tomoe fight, I just mean in general. All of the fights with her, it's like, you know, maybe it's worth trying to, you know, put effort into her and get her NP, but maybe I should just let her die, but what if she doesn't get attacked, and she just, you know, it's, it's, it's not great. Wandering around in a maze, yeah, who would've known that wandering around in a maze would not be that fun? Especially when it's not actually a maze. And you're just loading all the time. Like, see, they changed it from loading to this connecting screen, which is way faster. It's much better, but it, it it's essentially just loading. It's just shorter. I mean, why? Like, why, why is that two steps? Why is that two steps? That's just silly. Oh, let's see. We're, we still have such a long way to go, though, because there's still plenty of this floor left. And then I have to do it on the other account. And then we have day four, and the fourth maze is ridiculous. And then we have the fifth maze, which is even more ridiculous. So, we're gonna be here for a while. I like how I'm not even counterclassing. I'm just bringing Ku and Angra because Ku and Angra need bonds. It's like, what a riveting amount of, of gameplay we got going on here. Like, you know it's bad when, like, it, it, like, it does, does, I'm bringing Angra to everything in the front row. Like, that's not, that's not the best sign. I mean, I don't think there's very many Bond 15 coups on, in, on the planet right now. I, I'm sure somebody's done it. But it's pretty common to not be Bond 15. Most of like, and a lot of Omega Whales, you know, whales farm so much more than, than, than free-to-play people, so they get more Bond, but most of them don't care about Koo, right? Like, not some very few people are trying to even get Bond 15 Koo. There are crazy assholes, though, that will, like, got, like, you know, Bond 15 twins, like, in 48 hours. Like, that shit happens. Like, people post stuff on Twitter of them getting Bond 15, like, such a short amount of time after a unit comes out, but those people are just, like, you know, non-stop farming. The entire time since Yuna got added, and I, I don't know why, but you know. Yeah, I've seen a few units that it happens to, and they, they get released. Somebody gets some Bond 15 absurdly fast. A lot of them, though, I highly suspect use a bot. And actually, uh, I'm not gonna say who, but there's a couple that actually have, I know, used a bot. Like, they confirmed that they used, like, a macro to uh, get, get the thing to Bond 15. Because it's. It is really easy to use a bot in FGO. Like, you don't have to, like, hack your phone and have, like, the phone carrying out the action. You can just make a simple macro that, like, mimics, you know, a touch or a click happening. And you can... You can it's so easy to play FGO on the computer. You don't need to use an emulator. You can just use a, a, a screen mirror, mirroring, uh, like, app or something. There's a million of those. I'm using one right now. Like, I'm literally mirroring my phone screen onto my computer right now. And if I want to, I can have my mouse mimic you know, clicking the screen, even though like it's still being run by the phone, the 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 click on the computer screen can be sent as a signal to your phone as a, as a, you're tapping there, right? And that, that's an automatic thing. That's a, that's not a bot or a macro. That's just an, that's just a normal thing. Uh, and so what you can do is you can just make a macro for your mouse. 
you know, it's got, it won't interact with your phone in any way. It's just on your, completely on your computer's side of things. It's just mimicking to say, oh, have my mouse click here, then click here, and after this many you know, clicks, then you click down here instead to refill your AP and stuff. And people do do this. Absolutely, there are people that do that. And the, the, how they remove any like, RNG that might happen on the stage to fuck up the clicks is they bring a, a really, really strong team that no matter what will always three turn based on the CEs and the skills that they have. No matter what happens, they'll always three turn the node. And then so they have a set series of clicks and they just go non-stop. And when you do that, you're able to farm you know, literally 24-7 even when you're asleep. Because you can incorporate into the, the thing to use apples or to use refill with uh, uh, QP or whatever. And if something does get fucked up, you check like every six hours and you fix it. Uh, and that allows people to just, you know, get Bond 15 ungodly quickly. Now, I'm not saying everybody that gets Bond 15 ungodly quickly is doing that. There's no way for me to know that, but I do know some people do do that. Like, I, I have confirmation that some people do that. And it's also very easy to do that. Um, so a lot of times when you see those crazy bastards that get Bond 15 that fast, it's a good chance that they did it that way. And I'd actually be more worried if they didn't. That's the thing, I'd be more worried if they didn't do it that way, because that would be a very unhealthy amount of time to to be playing the game and to be awake, uh, and everything, so... Because there's a lot of efficient ways to do bond farming. You pick the stages you can clear very quickly, you pick the stages that give, like, the best bond, the time ratio, and all this nonsense. But even with that, you're not getting bond 15 without just farming in an ungodly amount. And... Like, it's just, it's so easy to, like I said, to use, like, a, a, a click farming method, like, on both Android and on, uh, iOS. It's so easy. Like, it's nothing. Like, it's, it doesn't make any effort at all. And, like, so you don't have to hack your phone or all that, and it's not detectable in any way. Um, that I think a lot of people do it. I really do think a lot of people do it. I have no idea who. I'm, I'm, not, I'm literally not gonna name, like, pick and choose, because I have no idea. Like, because I'm sure some people don't. I'm positive a lot of people don't. But I'm sure people do as well, so... I think that's a big part of, uh, some of that nonsense. Well, let's see. Again, he's just, it's like this is such a nothing stage. I like how Ku got absolutely no uh, cards, though. He kind of just do nothing this turn. Feels great. Yeah, if you're resetting, like, using apples or, or SQ, then yeah, it's way more about time than it is about, uh, like, AP efficiency. The thing is, I don't think that would work, uh, at Avalon. Now, there, there are certain programs that would catch, because some people make, like, programs and emulators and stuff like that, and those things can be detected. But... For example, if you were going to make a, a click macro, like I said, a, a, again, it's not like a hack, it's not an emulator. When you're using like a, a mirroring software, it's just normal that like your your phone, never mind FGO, your phone is programmed in a way where it can translate the clicks from the mouse to a click on the screen. And so let's say, you, the only way you would catch that is if they made it so they only made enough clicks for one loop. But normally you would make the macro encompass multiple runs. So each run, you're, even though you're clicking the same skill, you're not actually clicking in the same spot. And, and, like you, and, and you normally would do that anyway because every, every so many runs you would need to put in the macro to refill your AP, right? Um, and, and so the, the clicks are not going to be in the exact same spots. Uh, so I don't think that would work. Like I, I, like I, I, generally, if people put in the effort, it's very easy. The only way you, like the stuff you catch, the stuff you catch is like the automated stuff in like an emulator, those kinds of things. Those are pretty easy to catch. But like the stuff for like uh, like just your mouse and stuff, there's really there's really no way for them to, to catch it because it's completely on your computer side. And the thing is, um, I don't really personally I don't care too much, right? Like if I was a game developer, I wouldn't encourage that kind of behavior. But I'd also try to make a game that didn't make people feel like they needed to do that. Um, and ultimately, it's like, people are, I would rather, I, 100%, because I'm not a fucking psychopath, I would rather, like, these crazy fucking whales, I would rather they do 
you know, make a fucking uh, a, a mouse macro or something over, you know, killing themselves. Which has happened, you know, these people that get like really addicted to, to things and they don't sleep or eat enough and then they die, right? I would much rather uh, my, my, you know, potentially mentally unstable whales, and I'm not saying all whales are mentally unstable, but there absolutely are mentally unstable whales, this is just a fact. Um, I would rather those people just make a goddamn macro and get a bunch of free farming in than harm themselves because I'm not a psychopath. Right? Like, it, it's it's silly. Besides, why would you even care from, like, a business standpoint if some guy is making a macro on for his, like, uh, on his mouse here to, like, you know, click here and then, and then, and then click here to, to refill with, with uh, 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 SQ. Why do you care? You He just wasted an SQ, right? Good for the company, right? Like, so the, the I, I don't know why they care so much. Now, sometimes it matters. It depends on the game. Like, in an MMO, you have to really be wary of, about automation and stuff because that affects your economy, and that affects other people, and it, like, it, it can inflate value of things. But in a game like FGO, it doesn't matter if the value of Bond 15 gets inflated or not. It's, it's so pointless. Uh, and also, in a lot of PvP games, uh, honestly, I would say this. If you have a PvP game, where it's unfair, people farm more, your PvP sucks anyway. Why, why does farming affect your PvP? Like, that, that's a way bigger problem. Like in Epic 7, for example, being able to farm more absolutely would give you an advantage in PvP. But that's indicative of Epic 7 having really shitty PvP and not that automation is a problem. But yeah, in, in a game like FGO, it... It, it, it doesn't really matter. Like it, it, it doesn't. Like again, I wouldn't encourage it. It's not a behavior I would encourage. And I would try to, I would try to pace my game so people don't feel the need to do that kind of thing. But I, you, you have to be aware. There's always going to be the high end people that are, are always going to try to be as optimal as humanly possible, and they're always going to push that kind of stuff. And again, I would rather have them be using a bot than have them hurting themselves. Like this is not, I'm not, this is not some moral grandstanding, that, that's, that's pretty low bar. Like you'd rather have your players using an automated system opposed to hurting themselves. Wow, how moral of you. Let, let, you know, let me get you the Nobel Peace Prize, like, Jesus. I think we're actually at the ending here, we still have lots of side paths. And you can also just limit how grindy your fucking game is, right? And you give people more fun things to do. Also, if you when you there are certain things that can't be automated, right? Like the the if you look at the stages that that people do make automated clickers for, there are stages that are really easy. So there's no variance. If you made it so, hey, look, we're gonna bring back challenge quests from the past, and these are gonna give you really good maps when you beat them. It be, aside from like the really high end whales and stuff with every you know set, you know every you know uh, OP support ever and some of the easier challenge quests, you're, it'd be pretty hard to make a reliable thing for that. Yeah, you could still do the old fashioned farming and you could still automate that, but then you know people could keep up by doing more efficient farming that can't be automated. Okay, this stage is a bit a bit more. This could I could have made this interesting if I had cared to. <laughs> yeah, I know loads of people used to macro for lottery boxes. Cause a lot of, I don't know why, but what a lot of people do is they don't open any boxes until the event is over and then they have a million. What I always do is, you know, I'll do my farming for the day and at the end of the day I'll open those boxes, right? Or, or, and if maybe on an ult account, I'll do like, you know, I'll get enough mats for like five or six boxes or something, and I'll just do that then and then stop, right? And that way, yeah, in totality, I'm opening more boxes in a spread out fashion, but that keeps you sane. And it's not like annoying to manage. People farming that hard to know what to be saying, yeah, I kind of... Dude, I mean, I see whales that are literally in a competition with the other whales who can open the most boxes. I'm like, that's stupid. 
And I'm sorry, and I'm not trying to insult anyone. You can do what you want with your life. It's your life, not mine. But it's like, that's not even competition, right? It's like, who can grind more is not a competition, right? Beating someone at chess is a competition, right? Now, you know, far be it from me to tell people, you know, how to, you know, how to compete. But I'm just like, that is, in my view, is not a meaningful form of, of, of com competition. When you're just doing some repetitive action that a four-year-old could do. And let's see who can do it the most. That's like trying to feel like you have a big dick when you don't actually have a big dick, right? Like, I, I, and I see that in Gacha games all the time. You know, people, they want to feel like they're good at PvP, but they don't want to play, they don't want to play a fighting game. They don't want to play... Uh, you know, uh, an RTS game. They don't, you know, they don't want to do anything like that. You know, they try to do PvP in like a game where you can buy power or you can grind for power. I want to grind a lot and get an unfair advantage of other people that feel like I'm better than them. Like if you grind a bunch and get an unfair advantage on people, you have an unfair advantage. You're not better than them. You're not better because you spent, you have less free time or you have more free time. Excuse me. Like that, that's silly. Like I, I see that in MMOs all the time. People feel like they're better than someone because they, they, they wasted more time on something. Right? And I'm not saying there can't be skillful things in MMOs, there can be, sure, but like, the grind isn't part of that. And I, I can get, I guess, respecting someone's uh, commitment to something, right? Like maybe a bodybuilder, the amount of commitment they have to put into going to the gym over and over again and sticking with it and having the willpower for that. But that's, that, that's only a, a certain kind of respect, that's not the same kind of respect you generally will have for somebody that just performs something skillfully uh, and, and that kind of thing. Although I will say, with like bodybuilding and stuff, there is a skill in like knowing you know what to work on and when not, what not to work on, when to when to rest, when not to rest, what to eat, how to eat. You know, there there there's more to it than that. But and you could say there's some skill in grinding, but not really, right? Like yeah, there's like minor things you can do to be a bit more optimal and stuff. But it's really low bar stuff that most people are, you know know about and who cares, right? And uh, generally, it's just a matter of time, not a matter of using that time skillfully. <laughs> I mean, in a way, you have to grind to get better at something, but that's that's not the same thing, right? Because you can grind a lot in Go and not really be getting any better. It's it's just a matter of putting in the time. It's just a matter of putting in the time. That's what kind of why they consider it a grind. In chess, it's about playing enough to actually understand what the fuck you're doing. You someone could grind in chess for 800 hours and not really get any better because they, they're not smart enough and they just haven't figured it out and they're not, they're, 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 it's just not happening. You, you can't grind 800 hours in FGO and get nothing done. Like it's not, you, if you spend 800 hours grinding in FGO, you're getting a lot done unless you're trying to not get something done. A lot of people could spend a lifetime in chess and they're not going to be a grandmaster of chess. It is, it's just, you know, it is what it is. Um, so in a way, life is a grind, right? We have to use our time on something, and a lot of things require a lot of time to get better at. Thank you, JP Phantom, for the 15-month resub, dude. I really appreciate that. My chest kills feel attacked. But I mean, you know, it's like, you can theoretically call anything a grind, though. It's like, and there's a difference between talent and skill. I actually respect skill more than talent. Talent, you have no control over. You're, you're just born with talent. You, you, you just you just happen to to be born with the, the brain that is like well inclined for a certain thing or does really well in a certain area, and not not that I have a problem with talent. You know, it, it's cool to see people with talent, but what I really respect is skill, which is people that may have talent as well, but uh, maybe don't, and they get good at something through you know trying to understand it and practice and training and and that kind of thing. I, I have more respect for skill than talent, but yeah, the best is when you have both, obviously. But there's not a, a, the, 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 the bar, the skill bar on farming is so low that of, of course I don't have respect for it. Yeah, yeah, there's a learning curve and there are things you can do to be better and worse at farming. But I, it's not, the bar is so low, I have absolutely no respect for it in terms of like a form of competition. Like, I think rightfully so. I mean, it's pretty, that's a pretty silly thing. I would say it depends. Some people have, uh, I have normally extreme talent and they're just naturally able to do certain things that are just absurd and it, it just comes they're, they're not really having to work very hard that, that there are like geniuses and stuff where that happens to generally these stuff to you know hone the talent to a degree but the amount of work they have to put in a lot of times is much lower and it just depends it depends on the field it depends on how much talent they have some things are just so unnatural to humans no matter what kind of talent you're born with you're going to have to you know you know hone your skill at it no matter what but there's also certain things that you can just have in an eight 
uh, you know, a, a affiliation for it is such an extreme that you really don't have to work that hard for it. Um, so it, it's a case-by-case -case thing. However, there really is no situation, so that's what you have, regardless of the field, piano playing, chopping wood, whatever, uh, the best will always be someone that has, or at least tied for the best, because there are certain fields where this may not, you know, matter as much. But who will at least be tied for the best will always be someone that is naturally gifted for it and puts in the time to, to, to hone their skills and stuff. Um, unfortunately for some people, though, in a lot of fields, you'll have someone that is born with no natural talent for it, but they hone their skills very well, but they're normally very handicapped how far they can get. They may still be able to get farther than some people that have a lot of talent but are lazy, but not always. And it just depends, so... I, know, I just feel like humans, especially men, but this can apply to many women as well, and not all men, but I think it's very common that men have like a need to be competitive. And this is not a, a revolutionary statement, it's, it's a pretty known thing about the average male mind. Men generally have a need to be competitive, right? And then some people uh, try to apply that to things where it doesn't make any fucking sense. And also a lot of times the areas where it does make sense, they're not able to be competitive in, in those environments. And so they try to get like their competitive itch, if you will, in things like Epic 7 PvP or whatever. Now there's plenty of reasons to play Epic 7 PvP that's not that. I'm not saying everybody is doing that. But I see that a lot in video games, where people are like trying to big internet penis things and try to act like they're hot shit by doing things that are literally nothing but have a lot of free time. Like have a lot of free time and then you get, you get to beat everybody, right? It, it's silly. I grind it a lot and the numbers are bigger, right? That's not, it's not impressive and it, it shouldn't be. And I, I think a lot of, like again, this is not unique to men, but it's more common in men. A lot of men do this and I, I find it kind of sad, right? Now, I'm, I'm no arbiter of, of what is, you know, sad or not. And if they're happy and enjoying their life, good for them. But from where I sit, it just, it's kind of ridiculous and not a, a, a good use of your of your time. I can't help but notice we're using Ku against a Saber right now. Um, I, I think, I honestly think we'll still make this work. I mean, we got the damage CE. It doesn't have that much health. As long as this guy doesn't have any gimmicks that are gonna just absolutely shred me, I, I think we can handle this. Well, actually, as far as what I have seen, males aren't really conditioned to be competitive. They, they You can definitely grow up in an environment that, that pushes you more in that direction, but we see this in all of the animal kingdom. Uh, men often, not always, but often uh, men just have a natural desire for competition. And that's not surprising because the, the environment in which we involve, uh, evolved in. And that's why you see it, that's why you see in the animal kingdom so much. It is an evolutionary advantage to be competitive. And we happen to be a species that did not go extinct. So no shit, we're competitive. Right, it, this is not, it's not rocket science, right? Like, it's, it's uh, you know, and I, I, I get kind of annoyed with this sometimes, because I think people act like um, society influences things more than biology, which I think is horse shit, because our biology is what shaped our society, right? Like, it just, that's, that's how it is. Societies don't come to be just, you know, it doesn't just happen. You know, it doesn't just get spit into existence, right? Our, 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 our and I will say sometimes our societies though, do treat like exceptional people poorly. Like uh, sometimes societies get shaped in a way where it tries to shove the norm onto the, the the few people that aren't the norm, and that can be a problem. So I'm not saying there aren't there aren't sometimes you know societal issues and things like that, but it, it's like our our biology 1,000% influenced our societies. Uh, of course they did, because our brains didn't just come out of nowhere, our desires to do things didn't just come out of nowhere, but worked, worked, and you know, that, that, that's, that's why a lot of things are the way that they are. And that can be sad, I think, for some people, but it is what it is, you know, our biology is what it, our biology is, is what it is. Now, exceptions prove the rule, right? In biology and in, and in society and in everything else, we have lots of exceptions, and I think a, a good standard for how good a society is, is how do they treat their exceptions? Right? Like, you're, might, you might have a biological standard that's very common amongst uh, a certain gender or a certain race or, or whatever, or a certain age group, certain height. Um, 
but then there's going to be exceptions where you have people in that age group or that gender or that height or whatever that are abnormal and maybe they're they're you know abnormally good at something or abnormally bad at something or they're you know, they're more interested in this instead of that and I think what really matters is if the society is, is can accommodate for that can you accommodate for your exceptional people because there's always going to be exceptional people in all fields always and in many times those things are very helpful to a society right they're very much so and so you you want to take advantage of your exceptional people that's like the smart thing to do but yeah I I see this a lot in like the modern era especially in the young lads these days where we, uh, people seem to have been getting taught that like society shapes everything and everything we think and believe and stuff is just because of society that that's stupid like and like biology is just laughing right it's like where do you think the society ca came from why do you think it was shaped the way that it was of course society affects things of course it does I don't, I don't think anybody would say it's not nature and nurture of course it's nature and nurture but it's also nature right that's a very big part of it Hey, there are young lads in all generations, right? That doesn't that doesn't change. Because I see that sometimes. I'm not trying to get political or anything, but I don't think this is a political matter, although people do politicize it because we're fucking idiots and welcome to 2020. Um, it's where they try to blame literally any kind of outcome, behavior, tendency, statistic, everything on society, right? But then the, you see the opposite too, where you see the opposite be like, you know, everything's bi 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 biological, right? And like, there are no exceptions. You know, all men are going to, you know, favor these things and all women are going to favor these things. And, and this race is going to favor that thing and this age rate. Like, no, there's always exceptions, right? There's almost nothing in life that does not have exceptions and stuff. So it's like, you got to like find some middle ground here for God's sakes. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like... I feel like the modern world, everything's getting so polarized, and it's like so easy for people to get into camp X or camp Y, and it's either that, it's either this or that, right? And it's us versus them, and there's like nothing else, and there's no in between, and I think that's very unhealthy and uh, unrealistic. That's not because reality is gray as hell, so because like an individual, like maybe there's like someone you look up to, right? And maybe the the, the opinion opinions on various things and most of these opinions are really good opinions but these have they have a bad opinion in this other area right and most people like it's it's all or nothing right it's got to be oh yeah i agree with this person on everything or i agree with them on nothing like say one stupid thing everything's stupid like that you know people are not perfect you know people are going to have pros and cons ups and downs blind spots and then it, it, you can have someone that most of their life comes across as pretty foolish and maybe uneducated and and un, very un, not very very uh, naive they're not wise right but maybe there's one area in their life that they actually are really fucking wise in right where they are extremely experienced you know maybe they're you know they haven't learned a lot in all these other areas but there's this one area in their life that they're a motherfucking expert in right this happens all the time right and in that area like it or not they are an expert and in their opinion oftentimes is very good um yeah i really hate that when you see like the the baby getting thrown out with the bathwater. it's uh kind of disappointing to me I like how on the one stage that it really matters that I get my MP quickly, the deck just keeps getting shuffled in like really weird ways, so I'm not doing so hot on the MP game. Oh, there could be worse. That that card could have been in the sixth hand. That would have been really shit. And something I've, I've learned throughout my life, and also I think it's kind of evident by biology again, is, is humans are social creatures. No, no shit, Einstein. Uh, way to go. Nobel Peace Prize time for Green Boy. Uh, anyway, uh, but so we, humans generally want to be part of a group. Not all, again, there's exceptions. There's generally people that are more, you know, hermit-like or they like to be alone and stuff like that. Absolutely. I'm kind of in that camp. Uh, but generally humans like to be a, a part of some kind of group, right? And then so what helps you fit in with a group and do well within a group is agreeing with the group and, and not shaking the boat. And so a lot of people, even if they change their thoughts on something, they'll go from thinking X to then joining the group that's anti-X. And then now they have to uh, align with everything in anti-X, right? I, I'm seeing this a lot in, in today's world, and I'm not a, a big fan of this. Green, please save me. I feel this event tearing my soul away from me. I, I mean, we've already lost our souls, I think, Rex. I think it's... We got, we got, see, Rex, we have, to find, we have to find our souls in the maze. See, that's, that's, what's, what, that's what's happening. Yeah, I hate this event, dude. Alright, how much damage are we going to do to our counterclass? Huh? 
We're joining Cairo in his search for his lost doll. I mean, we've been doing that anyway. That didn't go quite as well as I would have liked. Nothing like your main DPS being a Lancer against the Saber, but I mean, I think we're gonna win this. I say a crit would do well. Oh, say we. Guys, Anger got his NP. Alright, I think we win next turn. Actually, a lot of reruns end up being pretty enjoyable. Something being the same that you did a year or two years ago isn't necessarily bad. I think a lot of people will be like, man, I really enjoyed that game. And then two years later, you're like, oh yeah, I'd, I'd be totally happy to play that game again. It's like, oh, this is so repetitive, right? That's not really a thing. It, it, this event wasn't fun the first time. That's the thing. This event wasn't fun the first time. And it was repetitive before you even beat it. What's making it repetitive isn't the fact that you did it a year ago, or that you did it two years ago. I actually don't remember when we did this event. Um, I guess it was roughly two years ago. Not quite. I don't think, I don't think it's quite been two years. But we're kind of getting there. Anyway. Uh, what makes it rep like the event is repetitive inherently because from the get-go you're doing the same thing over and over in the event itself. It's not a bad matter of doing the uh, event a second time. It's about hey look everything I'm doing in the event is the exact same thing and it's a lot of sitting around doing nothing and these stages are boring. That's what makes it feel really repetitive. It, it's it's actually pretty common to have certain activities that you might do multiple times in the same year or even every day or something. But they don't really feel repetitive even though by nature you're doing the same thing over and over, which is what repetitive means. Uh, but it's a matter of something actually being interesting and engaging and, and or having multiple outcomes each time you do it things like that right where what we're doing here is the same shit uh, It doesn't even matter what units we're bringing like I just, I just brought a Lancer to a saber boss fight for God's sakes And it's not like I, it's not like I brought it's not like I brought coup to, to a, a saber boss fight and then, you know, we had awesome teammates, so the waiver's decent It wasn't really the best pick ever there and our other teammate was fucking Angra like, it was Angra. They had that OP Angra just literally eating up our cards every turn, right? Like, if I had just, just brought Ku and Waver, that would have been stronger than bringing Ku, Waver, and Angra. Alright, are we done? Do we beat Floor 3? I think we still got the free quests, but who, I can do that whenever. Oh my god, it's over. Look at this. Look at this! Look at this! And it gets bigger! Tomorrow's floor is bigger than this one. And that's not the biggest one. The one after it is. God. I'll be really glad when this is over. I'll, I'll be I'll be really glad when this is over. At least I'm not using apples to get it done. So there's that. Is there anything in the shop I even care about? Oh, shut up. Do not have the patience for that. Uh, I guess I could use these because I'm actually kind of low on these. I normally don't buy these from event shops, but I'm, I'm kind of kind of low on them. All right, we'll just do that for now. Nothing else matters too much. I'll probably buy the other stuff just cause, but. There aren't that many servants that use the fluids, but uh, the ones that do use a lot is generally how it goes. If NA has the loads, they shouldn't, because their game version is already past this event, the original, like well past it. So I think they'd have the better version if they liked it or not. But you never know, NA can get pretty silly sometimes, and they might have, you know, bugs and stuff that weren't even there in the original, so we'll just have to see. All right, I guess we'll I'll play the old account a little bit because if I don't, I won't get this event finished on there. And uh, as boring as this event is, I gotta get it done. Especially on the ults because it doesn't have the Grail from last year, so I'd like to get that. I'll be Grail Blood X. I think my my second level 100 coup is 100 now. I'm pretty sure so.
We're, we're just switching to the regular old alt account, like the Gil he's got Gilgamesh and Achilles on it. The original alt account, if you will. Like, this account and my main account both existed long before NA was even announced. I think it's a- it's kind of far into this floor. Uh, not as- well, yeah, it's getting there. We got all this stuff over here done first, I guess. Oh wait, I already have a lamp. Uh, where did I use it? I guess here. I just killed the music by mistake. Yeah, over here trying to get Achilles and 100 face bond. I think 100 face is about to be bond 10, and I'm obviously not going to try to get her to bond 11, so uh, she'll be done and I can bring whatever I want. Achilles has been so bad in this event because you just fight assassins for days, and he's a writer, and, and this is actually a good example of, of him being terrible, so. And this also in, in turn makes uh, Scatty terrible. Because she has quick up. She's a quick support. And my only DPS worth of shit here is an art unit. So this this is not actually very helpful. Scanty DPS, yeah, there's that. You know, 100 face, le legitimately. Le legitimately, if you had no art up on your second skill, you, you would be a very good unit. Right, like, like she's still got a five turn cooldown on an evade, it's really powerful. Her heal's really large, and it's also a very short cooldown. You know, her overcharge is amazing, she can still loop and everything. So, it's like, you're a great unit even without the art up. But, we are fighting an assassin that you're not counterclassing, and Achilles is being counterclassed by. I don't think this is the time to not use the art up, right? Like, I, if there was a time that I would like that 80%, which is, you know, overwhelmingly in my favor, I think this might be the time you might want to bust that out. I, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but, uh... Okay, let's see here. I got the enemy has quick down, but we're using an art unit. Do I, do I give 100 face the quick up? Just for her quick, I guess I do. It's probably gonna do more damage than Achilles' MP will do, so. This is kinda sad. Maybe I should have put the quick card in the back. Cause I don't have the art up. I was like, I don't have the art up. So it's actually not gonna be my best MP game skill. Even with the art defense down, I think the quick card will probably make more. It'll be close, cause. The, the quick card is in second place now, so... I think the art card won, but it was, it was pretty close there. It's okay guys, we got, the, we got our buster up. That'll, uh, that'll do it. You know, they never re-ran such a bunch. They never did, which is really unfortunate. The bar on this side is not anything important. You might think it is, but it's not. It basically just dictates how strong the final boss is, but when you unlock the final boss, you can change the meter, and you can raise it or lower it, so it doesn't matter at all. And I think you have to fill it up to unlock the final boss initially, but I don't actually remember if that's the case or not. And I also don't really care. Because it's not actually difficult to fill it up. Yeah, I know, it's the most different event and it's the one that doesn't get a rerun. But they did make the Amazon event, which was kind of a follow-up to it. Although, I, I, in many ways, I don't think it was as good. In some areas it was better, and in some areas it was worse. So, this is the worst time to be skill-sealed. We're, we're actually gonna wipe because of this. Because we're skill-sealed, we, we lose, I'm pretty sure. That, uh, that kind of sucks. I think we can beat this with, and still bring Achilles, we just need to not bring Scatty, because, although 100 Face is by no means a carry here, uh, Scatty is basically doing nothing. Uh, she's being quite, uh, weak here. 
Can, can you stop skill stealing me like all of the time? See, if we could have healed, uh, 100 face would have lived here. So, I like how if Scatty had her NP, she would actually probably win. But, uh, of course she does not have her NP, so she's not gonna win. You know I, I wanna listen to the song again and turn it up so I can actually hear it. Oh man, we're so tanky. And we died by a hundred life. I'm not that surprised we failed that though, considering like our team was so bad. Oh, hold on, let me let me make I, I'm pretty sure 100 face is not Bon 10, but let me just make sure real quick. Okay. Wow, she's only 4,000 away. How about that? Why do why do the bonus CEs oh they're always on Scatty or Waver man? Like th these are all useless to me. It, the, the thing is I should just not bring Achilles. Like just just don't bring Achilles and we'll be fine. But I I, I kinda want to, so. Uh, it's just gonna be such a pointless uh endeavor though. Like it's gonna be random, honestly, if I win or not, if I bring the exact same team. Because it's not like 100 Face is actually good here, 100 Face is actually quite bad here. I should, like, bring the damage CE. That would be the. That, that would actually work. If I just brought the damage CE, uh, I could bring Achilles. I mean, Rex, I don't need to slot something specific to win. I obviously have my own units that can win. That's, that's not really the issue. I was just wanting a TAM so I could have an art support for 100 face and see if 100 face could do it. I should not have used her first skill and I have no idea why I did. I think some of it is because I'm so fucking bored, I'm not thinking there's, there's that. Gotta deck him in the schnoz. I like how big the uh, dragon guy is there, it's pretty funny. Man, if she had the damage CE, she would have killed it uh, right there. Might look weird, but I'm just not gonna use my second skill. I'll, I'll, I'll probably just get skill sealed later. You know what, I'm gonna do this. Waste the heal, but fuck it. Rule of Martha is pretty good. Basically, how you how you've got to see her is she needs her third skill to like really be good, in my opinion. Like, yeah, she's tanky, but she's not that tanky, and she doesn't do that much damage if her third skill's not applicable. She might say, well, that's I mean, she's only good in like a, a real niche. Then the thing is, her third skill actually works against so many things. Like, there are way more things that her third skill affects than there are like lancers and sabers in the game. Right, because it works. There, there, it works on divinity, and there's more. There's so many things with divinity that it also works on demons, and it also works on undead, and so all those things combined. Her third skill. So you basically see it as if you're fighting an undead, a demon, or a divine. You basically see it as, oh, Martha's counterclassing now, basically, and this is the time to bring her. And then in those situations, she'll perform extremely well because she'll take very little damage from them because she's a ruler and she takes little damage from everything. Uh, and then she also has anti debuff, and then she hits really, really hard. 
She's but she's a very offensive unit, right? Because she doesn't have any hard survival. She has a heal and anti debuff, but she doesn't have evade, guts, anything like that. So you need her to do a lot of damage before she dies. And if her third skill works, then she does, right? Like she's actually a, one of the better units you could have for Lost Spell uh, five, five two. You know, five one doesn't really matter, but for Lost Spell five two. Uh, every single major boss fight you fight there, every single one of them has divinity, so she gets huge damage, and she'll take you know pretty little damage from every single boss. And then there are a lot of debuffs in Lost Belt Five Two. Like debuffs are very common in Lost Belt Five Two, so her anti debuff gets a lot of. So basically, uh, Martha can you know drop a saintly beat down on the entirety of Lost Belt Five Two and be a, a huge help to you. And there's and also that applies to a lot of other. Singularities as well. Like, there's there's just a lot of content in this game which she's going to be very useful for. There's a lot of content that she's not, but that's just like you might have an insanely good Lancer that's amazing every time you fight an Archer, but they're not going to really help you when you fight a lot of other stuff, and that's kind of how she is. Except she actually is usable, I think, a little bit more often than a typical class. So, yeah, mainly just pay attention to when you're fighting Divinity, Undead, or Demon, and then... Because I think that's the big thing, is a lot of people, they'll, they'll fight something that has the undead trait, or d divinity, divinity's everywhere, and they just, they won't even think, oh yeah, Martha's actually really good here, they just, they don't think about it. Because for real, without her third skill, you know, she, she's tanky against normal card damage, but then she does kind of eh damage on her own. And it's not, it's kind of hard to justify her. But then if her third skill works, then it's very easy to justify her, and she's a great, like, backup DPS, big time. Yeah, our, I remember when our old account, when, when this account, this account, because this is the old account, when this account fought Zeus, you know, we mostly used budget units. The one unit that wasn't budget that we used was 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 Martha, and we were trying at first without her, and because this account is a lot more limit, uh, limited than my main account, I was like, I don't think I can do this, like, reliably with a budget setup. So I was like, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, work in a little bit of stronger stuff, and I picked Martha, and then, you know, she worked <laughs> very well as, a, as, like, a cleanup unit there. I, it still took a minute, though. I didn't just bring Martha and win. I... You know, it took us a while to figure out how we wanted to do the front row, and even how the fucking fight worked. Dude, that was really fun when I streamed that, because thankfully it didn't get spoiled, and I, I did not understand how that, that fight worked, and it, it, it was pretty fun figuring it out as I went. That was uh, a good time. But yeah, Martha was a uh, very good cleanup unit there. She has an upgraded MP, and uh, she applies the defense down first. That's a big part of why she's so good. Now, I don't think she has her upgraded MP on an A yet, but she'll get it at some point. Sadly, I don't remember when they decided to buff her. Anyways, um, yeah, she has an upgraded NP, and then if her third skill, you know, is a thing, she's lots a lot of damage, and then her NP also applies defense down to the opponent before she starts hitting them, like Enkidu does, and it, so it just results in a, a nice, solid, hard-hitting NP. And even if her third skill doesn't work, she can do solid damage because of that, but it's it generally is going to pale in comparison to someone doing proper counterclass damage. So after the anniversary, I'm going to start trying to work on the... I, I shouldn't say this, but I'm, I'm going to probably... Probably. I'm going to probably start working on the five-star tier list video a little bit after the anniversary. Because I'm not, I'm not working on it before that because they're just going to bump a bunch of five stars and it'll all be for nothing. So fuck that. But, uh, you know, that does not mean... That does not mean that the five-star tier list video is going to be done soon... Because, you know, it's very hard to work on those things and it's, it's uh, you know, very taxing on my computer and there's a lot of problems and it's very slow going and it's also just very mentally taxing and everything. So I'm not going to be rushing this at all. However, it probably will mean when I do start working on it, I'm going to stream a little bit less. I'm going to still try to make sure I absolutely stream like at least two or three times a week, absolutely. But there are going to be times where I, I need to just sit down and work on this thing. Cause like right now, you know, between like trying to hang out with Tusk and, and my brother and trying to, you know, not go insane from quarantine and all that. And, and, and streaming and, and doing like the standard videos I make. I haven't I don't have any t time to work on like uh, Like that George video. I want to make I'm still gonna make that George video and I got that Mordred video I, I want to make I, I have no time to work on those things right now if I wanted to work on those things I would have to be like, okay I need to not stream today and I need to work on this instead um, So when I start working on the five-star video, it's gonna be the same thing. There's gonna be days when I need to be like yeah, I need to just work on on, on the video and, uh, and not stream, but I'll, I'll make sure I'm not gonna uh, I'll make sure I don't go like, you know, many many days without streaming the only, the only time I might do that is when the video's almost done Right, and I'm like, oh, I need to get I need to I, I want to just power through this and get it over with Then I might go for a chunk of days without streaming, but uh but Yeah, like I said, I'm not 
I'm not promising anything right now, and I, you know, I'm not sure how long it's gonna take because it's not like I can't judge. I wonder how burnt out I'm gonna get, right? Like I don't know, right? I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to render the video. I don't know how many times the thing's gonna crash and all those. And so I have no idea. So you know, one thing at a time. But I'm not, I'm not even touching it until the anniversary is over. And I probably want to make some videos for the anniversary, and I want to, you know, actually enjoy that shit. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna do all this work and then have them buff a bunch of five stars. Like, I, I'm not gonna, you know, bother, so... Also, if they add story replay, that will probably slow down the tier list video a lot, because I'll use story replay to just make a lot of other videos that I want to make, and also I'll, I'll be testing things, like, forever, so... Hmm, I should have bought Waver, but uh, this is fine. Man, it took so long for me to. I kept. We've rolled on Achilles so many times over the years to get uh, him MP5, but I'm really glad we finally did it. It's really cool to have him MP5. Doing 100 face first, because she'll uh, make Achilles' quick up overcharged, so. No, I don't, I don't stream the... There's so many reasons I don't stream the streams. They're, they're generally like at 6 a.m. for me, so they're like, fuck that. Um, it, it just it doesn't really work out, so it'd, it'd be kind of fun to... The thing is, I, I feel like there's so little to talk about, though. Whenever these stream... This is every FGO stream ever, right? It's like two hours of bullshit that has nothing to do with FGO, and then like 20 minutes of just exposition dumping all the things they're about to do in FCO. And I'm like, I'm not staying up to seven in the morning for this. Uh, just give me the, the, the notes at the end, right? Because literally once it's over, you can figure out everything they announced in like five seconds, right? That is so much more practical than going through hours and hours. Like, it's, it's just like no way. So I, I don't even bother. Lemons are better, but limes are very good too. I like lemons more because they're just more flavorful and like a lot more sour, but lime is still good. You just have to be very careful with lemons so you don't damage your teeth. event dude I'm so glad I'm only doing it on two accounts although that's actually kind of more than I would like but I'm glad I'm not doing it on more than two accounts this is just not a fun event it's funny how some events are just fun and you're happy to play them and then some you're just like into me I, I'm telling you, I, I, I know it is so easy, it is so easy to be, to be a pessimist, and to be fair, being pessimistic about DW, there's a lot of legitimate reasons to be that way, um, and you're not going to be disappointed, but I think it, it's very likely we're going to get something really cool, because it's, first of all, the fifth anniversary is a very big number, and that you kind of expected to do something big, and they originally rented out the Tokyo Dome. Right, obviously they got cancelled because of the virus. There's just no way for your fifth anniversary you spend the money to rent out the fucking Tokyo Dome and then you don't do big stuff. Right, you just, that, 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 they're, that's stupid, right? Because you're setting expectations so high and then if you deliver less than normal, that, that, that's, that is an 
un that's a massive PR blunder. Now let's be fair, massive PR blunders happen in the industry from time to time, right? So it's not like it's impossible, but it, it seems very unlikely to me that they're not going to do, you know, big things. Um, unfortunately, though, what worries me is those big things may be all very temporary stuff, because if you look at, like, at least the, the average people you see that, like, put their voice out there on, like, you know, Twitter or the wiki or whatever, people overwhelmingly are just sitting there like, give, give me SQ! Like, that's all these, you know, they're just bang the table and like, give me SQ, right? Like that, so like that, I think the thing you can do to get people the most hype is just things like giving out a lot of SQ and giving out a free five star or giving out a free four star or like, you know, making the rates on five stars better, stuff like that. And that's not like those things are bad, but that's not, let's be real, that's not the kind of permanent stuff that I want to see for the game to make it better. Like, it's not, like... Sure, that, that's nice, but that unfortunately, that, that's what a lot of people get hyped for. So I'm kind of worried it's just going to be a lot of free SQ, maybe a free five star, maybe they make the SSR rate better, maybe they add a safety net, I don't know about that one, but like, you know, maybe they do something like that. But none of those, those things are big and they get people hyped, but they, they have no long lasting effect on the game in like terms of how it actually plays and your options and those kinds of things. I mean, they already did a free five-star ticket. <laughs> They've already done that. Yeah, I want new game modes. I want story replay. I, you know, I want, I want, you know, those kinds of things. Animation updates for old units would be nice too, though. Like, my god. I like this music, though, man. Love it. I'm gonna smack a snake. Why? I don't. Why? Why, why are we fighting something this week? We just... Like we just fought things harder than this, they had more health, so why even put this here? Because isn't this... I don't know, this might be a different side path, but... So maybe it wouldn't have always been in this order, but... Oh my god, that's... Pretty disappointing. I mean, people always said they'd never give out a free 5 star, but they did. So, I mean, there's no telling what they're gonna do. I'm telling you what they're definitely going to do because they want what comes around to go around and they want to benefit from anything generous that they do. Whatever they do, they want it to be something that people are going to talk about on Twitter, right? And it's going to get other people that aren't playing the game to maybe try the game and things like that, right? And that, that, like the free five star accomplished that actually. And so I think they're definitely going to do some things that are really aimed at, you know, trying to put, put a, a spotlight on FGO. Oh, look what FGO's doing. Right? They want the Grand Blue Fantasy people to hear that. They want the, you know, the, the Epic Seven or whatever, you know, Art Knights. You know, they, they want those people to hear that kind of stuff. And they want people that just happen to hear about this hype to be like, oh, maybe I should try that game, right? That, that's definitely what they're going to want. That's always what they want. That's what game devs always want. This is a good opportunity for them to do that. Now, that doesn't mean it can't be disappointing as fuck, right? Like, they might do something quote-unquote big, but it might also be incredibly disappointing, right? Especially for someone like me, so we'll see. I'm, I'm definitely not saying, oh yeah, it's definitely gonna be awesome. It, it, it might not be at all, but they're definitely gonna attempt. They're gonna attempt to do something awesome. There's no, there's no, they'd just be, it's such a PR disaster not to. And generally, they work on the anniversary stuff in advance, so whatever they're adding, they've probably been working on it for a long time. That's why they were able to add all those bronzes at once. They've been working on those bronzes for a long time, and some of them have probably been completed a long time ago, but they didn't add them until they were already in, all, you know, in the anniversary, and then they, boom, they add them all in one, in one spot. So, I'm hoping for something cool like that, that's the good stuff, but uh, we'll see. Dude, if they added Wadim, I'd be so happy. I would grail him. Uh, He'd literally be my next fail target. Although, I, I will say I might grail Tesla first. I don't know. I do really like Tesla. If they give- if I get Tesla NP2 and he gets an animation update, I mean, I, I have- at, the, at that point, I'm, like, absolutely failing him to 100. I don't think they're gonna do six stars anytime soon. I think they might at the end of the game, maybe. They might have, like, a very small number of six stars that are really, like, specific to, like, the main story and stuff like that. They might- they might do something with it, but I'm not sure. I, it doesn't seem like something they'd want to do, like, it's not right now, just because they really had no need of it, and people are kind of annoyed enough with the five-star rates.
Sick mash for six star. Oh, uh, that would be horrible. I, I will say though, I do feel like the devs are just so out of touch with the community. I don't think they even realize what the community wants, and I've just seen so much evidence of that so many times. Like, I, I, and that's why I think the early game is so bad and all those things. I, I, I do think DW is very detached from what the, the player base actually wants. So, I, I, you know, I don't know if we're gonna get a lot of stuff that we actually want. But we'll see. There's also, you know, money and laziness and publisher nonsense. Should've given that to Achilles, I just... I actually meant to, I just kinda of misclicked and I didn't care enough to actually think about where I was clicking. Uh, I could've given him the crit buff, and that would've definitely killed this guy. But, and see, this is another thing that worries me, is every, the mainstream, because like in my stream I, I attracts a pretty specific crowd. Um, but when I, when I look at like everyone else talking about the anniversary, all they care about is free SQ and what the rate up is. Overwhelmingly, that's what people care about. And sure, I would like a nice rate up, like for Zeus or something, sure. But that pales in comparison to like the, me wanting them to improve the core game. Like that, that's nothing. I'd rather, I'd rather have no free SQ and no rated up 5 star, but they improved the core gameplay, right? Like seriously, if they added nothing, but then they just made the core, you know, stuff better, and like story replay, other game modes, a challenge tower, you know. If they just did that kind of thing and we got no free SQ, no, 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 nothing else, nothing else, no animation updates, no new 5 star, no rate up. I'd be like, yeah, this is awesome, I'm good enough for me, right? Where if you flip that and you get all the bells and whistles but no core improvements, then I'm not happy at all. Right? Like, even if they add Zeus, and, and like, even the Green Knight, although obviously I'd be super happy to have Green Knight, but you could do all that kind of stuff, but then not, you know, address any of the core problems, and I, I'm gonna be like, okay, this is a fucking waste. Because, unfortunately, they don't generally address core gameplay stuff on any time other than the anniversary. You get one shot a year for them to fix things, and then half the time they don't. Zeus but a Rin face, that would be horrible. I would not be down for animation updates in Zeus only. That would be unbelievably disappointing because this game is got, it's not like this game has a few problems. This game has some massive core problems that are just glaring in the face and ignoring them this long is absurd. And so like dismissing it again is just, that's, oh my God. I, I about lost my mind last year. So if, if we have another one like that, I'm just gonna be like, oh boy. Honestly, I've always said this, I remember I talked to I Love Arjuna about this. The more they add things I really like and care about, the more frustrating it is. Right? It's like if they add something I really like, if they add the Green Knight, I want to go use the Green Knight more than anything, right? But if there's nothing to go play, it sucks. Right? When you give people a, a lot of awesome toys but no, no sandbox to use them in, it, it's bad. And if you, if you just keep giving them more toys and you keep not giving them a sandbox, you're just making it worse and worse. Hey, look, it's it's more assassins. I'll be glad when I don't have to bring Hundred Face because she's not like she's like two k away from spawn ten now, and then I can you know just if I have to carry Achilles across the finish line, I can bring whatever unit is best for doing that. I think we'll be fine though. They don't have much help.
Yeah, I know, memorial quests. Like, they're nice while they last, but they're not nearly as good as story replay, and they don't last very long, and they're so cherry-picked that I don't care too much about them anymore. They're more frustrating than anything. Unfortunately, I think memorial quests are a big part of why they don't want to do story replay. Like, I'm serious. I think in their fucking key brain I, marketing or whatever, they're just like, if we, uh, if we, uh, add story replay, there won't be any, that won't be a selling point for the anniversary anymore. Cause, uh, yeah. But I'm like, how about you do something different for the anniversary then? Like, make the memorial battle something different, like a different, you know, like, all the bosses but harder. Or, you know, boss fights that, that you know, could have been but never happened or whatever. I mean, do shit like that, like, goddamn. But I, I'm serious, with the way DW behaves, I really think that's a big part of why they don't do story replay. I could easily see them thinking, like, oh yeah, but then... If we did story replay, the memorial battles wouldn't have any purpose. And then the logical next step is, oh, we'll just do something other than memorial battles. But no, they don't, they don't do that. They just end it there. Yeah, there's a few units with four buffs. Not very many, though. Hey, Anabashi, thank you for the two-year resub. I actually almost made it to the exit, but I think I got some side paths back there that I haven't done. God, the saber altar stage is so boring, dude. I think it's just MHX as far as I'm aware. I can't think of anyone else. Not... I'm uh, not, uh... It's possible that I'm just forgetting someone, but I think it's just MHX. I didn't even look at the classes that I'm fighting. Yeah, there's not a lot with three buffs either, but there's definitely there's a good chunk of units with three buffs now. <laughs> okay. okay. This is definitely the music I think of when I'm thinking of Achilles taking on a bunch of ghosties, like, oh, obviously. Not sure it was actually worth it to NP the assassin, but it's uh, the biggest class problem, even though it's lower health. <laughs> MHX's final buff was kind of unnecessary, but uh, I don't know, she's popular, so. It's not like she's OP or anything, it's just she was pretty good before it. I really should have just done the uh, 100 phase chain, but whatever. It's not like that didn't work. There it is! God! Now for like the next account that gets to Guadia, I can uh, I can test her proper. Although I don't have this account doesn't have uh, Black Grail limit broken, so you're, you know I don't have all the pieces of Exodia for her. I don't even know if I'm close to having it. I should check. I'm glad I finally got that done though. Shamer Bond CE is completely pointless. What was I checking? I forgot. I, li I literally just forgot what I was supposed to be checking. Oh yeah, Black Grail. 
Let's see. Doesn't look like I have any other copies on hand. So I'm not even remotely close to having. I mean, it's, you know, she could might be able to do it without Little Broken Black Grail. It's just if you want to test her, like, on even footing with what we typically use there. Uh, to, to do that, I need it limit broken, but I'll have to do it without and uh, deal with it. She can probably do it though, to be honest. She can probably do it before Bond 10. Twenty forty feels bad. It's not twenty thirty. That's a different CE entirely. Uh, no, Bond CE should not give a thousand a thousand, but they should definitely give more than a hundred a hundred. But, uh, giving a thousand a thousand would be kind of stupid. That's too much. Because, like, generally their effects can potentially be really strong. It d d depends. Um, but, like, I always say, like, 500, 500 or something I think is fair. That way it's like, yeah, they're, they're handy, but they're not going to be competing with, like, a lot of raw stuff. Yeah, no, Herc with 1k, 1k is, is really necessary. But, yeah, I, I, like, I like 500, 500. The main issue, though, is not their stats, so that's obviously a problem. I think the biggest problem is the fact that so many Bond CEs are really mismatched. Like, they have so many DPS units with support CEs, and then support units with CE those CEs that don't make any sense at all, right? Like, Stargen or something. It's just stupid. Like, Lu Bu has Buster up for the team. That's stupid. Lu Bu wants, like, Golden Sumo or something, and then a support giving Buster up to the team, right? And it's just because early up go, they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. They're like, oh, Lu Bu's a Buster unit, so yeah, that's, you want him to have a Buster up for the team. Like, it's just dumb, terrible logic. All right, yeah, I think we'll wrap up. It's getting kind of late and I need to, I need to, I need to take a shower and I need to eat and all that. Let's see, how much more of this do I, oh god, we still have a lot to do on this floor though. I'll try to, I'll try to get that done today, so tomorrow we're just doing floor four. Okay, tomorrow is gonna suck though. Floor four, floor four is awful and it's super long. Like, you think, you think this is bad? Uh, four is so much worse than this one. And then I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do about five, so, but <laughs> just gotta get through it. If I can keep getting a floor done a day, I'll be done in two days, right? And at that point, it doesn't, it doesn't seem so bad. But on the flip side, I'm like, I'm gonna have to grind my ass off on those two days. And I, I'm, I'm not exactly jumping for joy at that prospect. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, hopefully soon we'll get to do some, like, Darkest Dungeon or some of that. I'm kind of looking forward to try mixing things up a bit. Either that or, like, Ark Knights. I haven't played Ark Knights in quite a while. Alright, what are we doing here? We will raid, uh... That Phantom stream last night was hilarious, by the way, though. That was enjoyable. Good old Phantom of the Opera, man. I'll raid that, uh, that blue fellow. There we go. All right, boys. You have a good one. Uh, we'll probably stream tomorrow because I gotta get through this freaking event, so... But, uh, yeah, I'll see y'all.